From the Oakland County Alameda Coliseum in Oakland, California, CBS Sports presents the Minnesota Vikings versus the Oakland Raiders. The captains from the Vikings and for Oakland, the toss of the coin, Minnesota has won the toss. They will elect to receive. Hi, right, everybody. I'm Ben Scully, along with George Allen and Jim Brown in the rain in Oakland. For Oakland, first time since 1971, they're not heading for the playoffs. And for Minnesota, a most important game, Coach. Yes, it is, Vinny. They didn't play too well last week. They were embarrassed. They're a proud uh, football team. They have a lot of pros, a lot of character. I think they'll play well today, and it's in their hands. That which, that's what you want, to control your own destiny. Talking about pros with a lot of pride, that would sum up Oakland, a very disappointing year. What about that pride in the final game? Will it be a team just going through the motions, do you think, Jim? Definitely not here in Oakland. It's a class organization, Vinny and George. Uh, Al Davis, John Madden have been great leaders over the years. Uh, you talk about pride and character, George, but today we're talking about economics. We're talking about money. Those guys are going to come up for contract negotiation next year. Consequently, they want to have a big one. I think that Oakland's going to win. What do you think, Coach? Well, I think I'd give Minnesota the edge because the, of the incentive of winning this game. They win their division. Well, Coach is no better. Let's go over to Vince Scully. Okay, Jim. Thank you, fellas. Ray Guy counting heads to make sure he has 11 men out there ready for the kickoff. Ray Guy, the remarkable punter, also kicking off. And deep for Minnesota, Kevin Miller standing on his own one-yard line. Up in front of him, Robert Miller. And Ray Guy is ready. A must game for Minnesota, we think. It depends, of course, upon the outcome down south. Miller on his one-yard line to the five. Kevin to the ten, hit there, and dragged down by Watts, who made the hit at the ten-yard line. And they'll give him out to the 11-yard line. So Minnesota will put it in play first and ten the ball just shy of their own 12 yard line up front Frank Myers Charles Goodrum Mick Tinglehoff Wes Hamilton and Ron Yeri. The men who will be the receivers Ahmad Rashad Sammy White and the tight end Bob Tucker. At the wheel of course Fran Tarkington and the running backs are Ricky Young and Chuck Foreman. So first and ten from the 12 yard line out of the eye in motion goes Sammy White to the right Tarkin into the second man Foreman and he stumbles forward to just about the 15 yard line. Let's take a look at the Oakland defense right now. Up front in a 3 4 defense John Matuzek Otis Sistrunk the middle guard and Charles Fillior number 77 is in there instead of Dave Browning. Then you have Ted Hendricks, Monty Johnson, Rod Martin, and Phil Villapiano. With Hayes, Jackson, Phillips, and Tatum in the backfield. Second and seven as the tight end Tucker goes to the other side. A light rain now where it had been pouring 15 or 20 minutes ago, so the field is still in pretty good position. Illegal procedure call against Minnesota. The officials today, Chuck Heberling is our referee, the umpire Bill Ross, head linesman Al Sabato talking to Fran Tarkington, the line judge is Bruce Alford, the back judge Paul Bates, side judge Dave Perry, and the field judge Bill Stanley. Illegal formation, white offense, tackle uncovered, penalty refused, third down. Apparently when they moved Bob Tucker, they left their tackle uncovered in illegal formation. So a five-yard penalty, it's refused. It is third and eight on the 14-yard line of the Vikings, just the start of the ball game. Tucker goes wide right. Sammy White is in a slot left inside Ahmad Rashad. And here comes Foreman, and he gets out to the 20-yard line. So it'll be fourth and two, and they will surrender the football and go into the punny. George, what about the opening series? Well. Tarkington is going to try to get that running game going, establish the running game a little bit. They only made something like 18 yards running last week against the Lions. They can't throw 40, 50 passes and expect to win. The other thing is, Tarkington has at a disadvantage in that he's behind early in the ball game and he has to throw. Greg Coleman standing on his own five yard line. He'll be punting to Neil Colsey. And Coleman gets it away. Colsey has to come up and play it on a bounce at midfield, and there will be no return as it rolls to the 44 yard line of Oakland, where the Raiders will put it in play. First and 10 
So very good field position for the Oakland Raiders, Jimmy. Well, yes, they look like they're ready to play today, Vinny, and they have great field position. Uh, Coach Allen is always talking about the importance of field position. On, you know, on a field like this, you're better off to lose the toss and, and get a good kickoff like Ray Guy gave them. Now they have that field position. Oh, well, we'll take a look at Oakland now as Stabler brings them out with Whittington and Van Egan at the running backs, and there goes Mark Van Egan, Mullaney, and Sutherland, along with Jeff Seaman, bring him down as he gets out to about the 48-yard line. We'll take a look at Oakland's offensive line. Shell, Upshaw, Dalby, Marvin, and Lawrence. The wide receivers, Cliff Branch and Morris Bradshaw. The tight end, Dave Casper, who's caught 60 passes this year. And the running backs are Arthur Whittington and Mark Van Egan as they line up behind Kenny Stabler. Bradshaw goes wide right, Branch is wide left. Casper on the right side. Stabler throwing to Casper, who did not catch it. He short hopped the ball. Casper has caught nine touchdowns this year. Well, here's Stabler going back to throw. He's got plenty of time. The ball's thrown a little bit low, underthrown. Incomplete. The other thing we talked about the running game. Oakland's had trouble, Jim, getting their running game going. They rank 11th on run offense. Last year they were first. They have had a lot of injuries this year, Coach. Yes, That's they the have. Reason. Third and six on the Oakland 48-yard line. Just the start of the ball game. No score. Stabler with some time off the hands of Whittington. Diving at the ball is wise. And there's a flag on the play on the Oakland 43-yard line. Preliminary signal is holding against Oakland. In fact, uh, Coach and Jim, John Madden was making an interesting remark before yeah. the game about holding, but not in a passing situation. No. 76 percent of holding plays have been in the running game with Oakland this year. Usually you don't get shot. called holding. Running. Holding. Offense number 63. Refuse. That's Fourth Gene Upshaw. So it'll be a fourth down. This telecast presented by authority of the National Football League intended for the private use of our audience and he rebroadcast or the use of the telecast without the express written consent of the Oakland Raiders and the National Football League is prohibited. Ray Guy averaging 43 his longest this year 69 and we'll check hang time in the upper right hand corner. Kevin Miller is standing back on his own 13 yard line. And Guy hits it up into the sky, and Miller standing on his 10, and look at that. Oh. That's the payoff on the hang time. That's, there's a flag down. Ray Guy, the only punter ever selected in the first round. That was back in 1973. And with a flag on the play, he's gonna have to kick it again. He's a remarkable athlete, is Ray Guy. In college, he was such a good pitcher that he was drafted by the Reds, the Braves, and the Kansas City Royals. They wanted to make a baseball player out of you. But you know, Vinny and, and George talking about uh, holding on running plays. Ineligible receiver downfield. Offense, number 54. In past Fourth years, down. holding was almost always on passing plays. Yeah, the you, new rule, George, I guess, yeah, changed that You up. never thought of holding on running plays. Now, you know, there's more penalties. Speaking of penalties, Jim, on this phase of the kicking game, this is one phase I think we can improve uh, we have to repunt so many times it, it uh, prolongs the game and it's not a vital part of it a man may only be downfield six seven inches good point take another look at the hang time his last kick was four three and he boots another monster and a fair catch as Kevin Miller sees the ball bounce into uh, the Minnesota end zone so scratch the hang time but yeah. look at it you know uh, Benny and Jim five one is excellent Everybody can run a five flat 40, get down there and cover kicks. With Ray Guy, he's in a class. It's first and 10 for Minnesota, putting the ball in play on their own 20 yard line. And we'd like to welcome all those good folks who are watching the San Francisco Detroit game. And you saw Detroit on a hot streak knock off San Francisco for Monty Clark. Must have been a little bit of revenge yeah. in that one. 33 to 14. Yes, it was. Yeah. Here come the Vikes now. Sammy White goes wide right. Ahmad Rashad left. The backs are split. That means Foreman and Young. Parking and unloading to Young. He has Goodrum out in front blocking for him. And he's across the 30, slips and goes down at the 32. Monty Jackson right there to go down with him, number 42. 
Well, Tarkman did something uh, smart on this. He rolled out to his right. Again, he's buying time to pass and throws back against the grain. A quick screen to 34 Young. Picked up good yardage. Now, they haven't shown that in recent weeks in the games we've done. The Vikings gained only 22 yards rushing last week. So they've got to establish a better running game. First and 10 on their own 32. Foreman fumble. And we will wait on the call. Oakland recovers Foreman's fumble. John Matusak, the big guy, 6'7", 275, fell on the ball. All the fans out there, take a look at this. It is the responsibility, really, of the quarterback to get the ball there. You can see that Foreman's not even looking. He didn't have his arms up high enough, but it is the responsibility of Tarkington to put the ball in his stomach. So the first big play of the day, Foreman unable to hold on to the ball. The Vikings' John Matusak recovers first and 10 on the Minnesota 31-yard line. Branch in a slot right inside Bradshaw. Play action fake to Whittington. Stabler to Casper. No good. Dave Casper has caught 60 passes for nine touchdowns. And we might mention one thing about Stabler. He has thrown 11 of his 15 touchdowns to tight ends. Nine to Casper and two to Raymond Chester. Yes. Oh, go ahead, George. He was Coach. expecting the ball over his left shoulder, his outside shoulder. He had to make an adjustment and come back in. He lost the ball. There's John Matusak. He recovered the fumble by Foreman. Now Cliff Branch is coming out of the ball game, getting a round of applause. Bradshaw goes left, and Fred Bolitnikov is welcome to the game. Number 25, he's wide right. Second and 10. Stabler fakes once, then goes over the right to Whittington. And a reception, Jim Marshall it's falls complete. on it, but no catch. So it is no catch. Uh, well, to me, this was an incomplete pass, Jim. Uh, a, a completed pass and a fumble. That's the way I'd rule it. The official rule is an incomplete pass. He's got that ball, and now he's hit, and he loses it. Seaman stripped him a little. Yeah, yes, that, it's that a good play about, by Seaman. About two beats, you know. I'd rule that up. To me, that's a fumble. Coach, it's a judgment play. Now watch. He's got the ball, and Seaman strips him. And it's a question of possession. So it's third and 10 on the Viking 31, and Stabler won some points early. Fires down the middle, juggle, Bolitnikov holds on to the ball, Nate Wright battling him, but Fred Bolitnikov, the great name at the other end of Stabler passes, makes the reception. Well, it looks like we're going to have a passing game today, not much running. Stabler's got a lot of time to throw, and Bolitnikov, the good hands, makes the catch, and it's a first down. They rule that he made the catch at the 20-yard line, even though they pushed him back a little more. Early going, no score. Meanwhile, St. Louis pounding Atlanta 35 to 14. So Atlanta, although they've clinched a wild card, will no doubt lose a chance to play at home. First and 10 on the 20, and Mark Van Egan gets inside the 15-yard line. Van Egan needs 12 yards today. As Pete Banasak carried that time, Van Egan, when he gets 12, will go over the 1,000-yard mark. So we'll be watching him. John Madden, meanwhile, Storming on the sidelines. It'll be a second and five from the 15. But Bud Grant, the other side of the coin, poker faced as usual. Van Egan all alone in the backfield. Vanisak on a wing. And Van Egan grabbed from behind by White and dropped as he got inside the 15 to about the 13 yard line. A score Cincinnati 48 and Cleveland 16. So Cincinnati finishes the year in fine style. Well, it looks, Jim, their game plan is to run to their left side, to the Vikings' right side. That's what they did in the Super Bowl, running re over uh, Upshaw and Shell. All right, that's what I wanted to come out, Upshaw and Shell, two of the greatest that ever played the game, Coach. By the way, Upshaw has played in 169 straight. Shell has played in 155 straight, so you have some wise old heads on the left side. Yes, sir. Third and three from the 13, Stabler looking right. Pumping goes over the middle. Belichnikov touchdown to Fred Belichnikov, his second touchdown pass of the year. Yeah. And Kenny Stabler going for his 16th touchdown pass of the year. He st he stayed right in there. He had good protection, but there was also a delivery sack on him. He looked the entire defense over. Watch his head. 
and follows Blitnikoff all the way. And the good hands, good throw. You know something, Coach? This game is probably going to be sided on the line of scrimmage. Oakland dominating Minnesota at the line of scrimmage. Errol Mann, who has missed eight of his last 13 points after, kicks it high and gets it through. So he snaps a losing streak. And early going in the first quarter, the score, the Oakland Raiders seven and the Minnesota Vikings nothing. Ray Guy, six years out of Southern Mississippi, will kick off for Oakland as they get on the scoreboard on a Stabler to Boletnikov 13-yard touchdown pass. Man's kick is good, 7-0 Oakland. Guy kicking to Kevin Miller. He'll take it on his own seven-yard line. To the 15, to the 20, and goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line. And that's where Minnesota will put it in play, first and 10. For Kenny Stabler, like any quarterback, he needs time. Let's look at it. That touchdown pass. Watch his release time. Lower center of your screen. Getting pretty good blocking out of Shell and Upshaw to keep White and Marshall out of there. 4.8, George, how about that? You can't cover them if you give them that much time to throw the football. First and 10 from the 25 for Tarkenton. Chuck Foreman, the running back. Big hole on the right side. Foreman fumble. Oakland picks it up, and there goes Charlie Phillips. And Phillips going into the end zone. No flag, and it is 13 to nothing, Oakland. Monty Johnson made the hit, and Chuck Foreman, for the second time, coughed it up. Well, Benny, the first time, it really wasn't Foreman's fault. This time, of course, it is his fault. Chuck has been having a little rough lately, but if you watch that right leg, there's a little limp. He's hit, but I think it's the fact that he didn't have his hand over the point of the ball, and it's a wet day out there. Unfortunate mistake for Chuck. And for Chuck Phillips, his second touchdown, he had one on an interception for a TD, and this time he picks up Foreman's fumble and goes in with it. 13 to nothing, Oakland. The spot for man by David Hum. The kick is good. It is Oakland, 14, Minnesota, nothing. And the Vikings, at least in the beginning, are as shaky as they were last week in Detroit, and they're down by two. Ray Guy, once again, ready to kick off. It's the third time he has kicked off in the early going of the first quarter, 14 to nothing, Oakland. And he thunders one to Kevin Miller. He goes five yards deep and decides not to bring it out. So it'll be first and 10 for Minnesota on their own 20-yard line. First and 10 for the Vikings on their own 20-yard line. Boy, they need something in a hurry to wake up. Sammy White in motion to the left. And Tarkinen throwing low to White, who gets up. Phillips boxes him in, and down he goes with Otis Sistrunk, bringing him down at the 15-yard line. Well, the, the big thing uh, to me here is that Tarkenton is going to have to throw more than he wants to. The ball's throwing low, and, and the receiver slips, and by the time he gets up, uh, he doesn't have a chance. But uh, Fran Tarkenton's had a tough time this year in that he's had to throw more than he would like to because the team has been behind in the first quarter. Offside defense number 41 lined up offside. First time. Villa Piano had lined up offside. So instead of second and 15 as you look at Villa Piano it is a first down first and five on the 25. So really Minnesota picked up 10 yards on that play. Sammy White going wide left. Young moves up on a wing, so Foreman is all alone behind Parkinson. And Foreman darting inside the 15 to the 20, fighting people to the 25, and Hendricks has to come over to help Hayes out, and Jack Tatum finally knocks him out of bounds. Chuck Foreman is really trying to show that he's still the great back that we always knew he was. The great hole there, the block is fantastic. Now it becomes an individual thing. You watch him, he's going to probably drop that shoulder. Usually he would spin in that situation, but because the ball is a little slippery, he probably didn't want to spin. He showed some real determination there, Jim, to, to get extra yardage. That's what it was, Coach, determination, really. Seattle leading Kansas City 7-3 in the first. It's first and 10 Vikings on their own 38, and Tarkin going to the air. 
Got time, and it's going to be picked off by Ted Hendricks. Hendricks at the 45, still on his feet, and goes out of bounds just at the 40-yard line. Ted Hendricks is playing the greatest football of his life, 6'7", 220 pounds. John Madden had said before the game that he is having a fantastic year, and you'll look at his third interception of the year. Big Ted going up, making a great one-hand catch, then brought it in. You'll see now as how tough he is once he gets going to bring down. Foreman tried to get him. He just pushed Foreman away as if he wasn't in the picture, and he finally takes a shot by Frank Myers and steps out of bounds on the Viking 40. Not many linebackers that he could make that play. His height and Let's jumping the ability made the difference. There goes Whittington, and he's inside the 35-yard line, and Oakland right now looks like they're ready to run Minnesota into the bay. Last time we checked St. Louis, Atlanta, we see now Atlanta gets on the scoreboard. Bartkowski does that on an eight-yard pass to Ricky Patton, 35-21 in favor of St. Louis, UC Big Ted Hendricks. So Kenny Stabler with a second and five from the 35, and he gives to Whittington, and he gets himself a first down inside the Viking 30, and they finally bring him down at the Viking 26. Gene Upshaw and Art Shell doing a marvelous job exploding the left side of the line. You're right, Benny. When you have two guys that size, it is very difficult to defend against them. Oakland have done this over the years. Whittington is a new man. He has great speed, but they've all had a lot of trouble at the running back this year because of injuries. First and 10 on the 25, Mark Van Egan runs into people and gets maybe two yards to the 23-yard line. And, of course, for Green Bay, no score in the Los Angeles Coliseum. When they hear this score, it's got to help the Packers. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, Stabler now is in a great position, Benny. He can run or pass. He, he's in control. He can do anything he wants to. By the way, Mark Van Egan has now gone to the 1,000-yard mark for the third consecutive year. He is the only rated to have done it twice, so naturally, he stands all alone in their record book. Second and eight, Stabler to Whittington. And Art Whittington trying to get inside a Marvin block, but the Vikings slow him up at the 20-yard line. Mickey Marvin, number 65, the right guard, had pulled to lead the way for little Arthur Whittington, who is only 180 pounds, a rookie out of SMU. You know, Vinny, when you talk about Mark Van Egan, uh, people probably wonder, what is his secret? Well, in talking to Madden, it is quickness. He's probably the quickest man on the offensive team. And Jimmy's also very durable. He, you check his record out, he misses very few ball games. He plays with bumps and bruises. You like that as a coach, right? Oh, I like that. <laughs> then you can depend on him. Three right. tight ends, Casper, Chester, and Ramsey are all in there now. And it'll be Van Egan behind Banasek's block. And Jim White, holding on to his waist, slowed him up so that everybody else, Wise, McNeil, could finally bring him down just around the 15-yard line. So it was third and three, and they've come within less than a yard where it'll be fourth down. And since they are leading 14 to nothing, Stabler looks over at the bench. Man, it's not coming in, so they're going to go for it. Stabler likes to pound the left side here or go play action and hit Casper on a crossing pattern. Fourth and one from the 16. Banasak and Van Egan. It will be Van Egan. And he got the first down. He was stymied at the 15-yard line, but then an extra burst carried him across for the first down. Well, as George Allen said, they went to the left side. Two big guys over there. They gave it to their quick, determined ball carry Mark Van Egan he kept fighting as he does all the time kept his head low his shoulders low and bird for the first down first and 10 Oakland on the Viking 13 yard line the Raiders already lead 14 to nothing Whittington on a wing so Van Egan is going to carry inside Whittington's block and he dives inside the 10 to the 9 yard line and the man there to cover him and that's about all was Hannon had to come up for his safety then if there was any question about pride and character, George, yeah. about the Raiders, we can see that it's all they're here. They're showing it. The, the Vikings offense has had the ball three series, three turnovers. And even an implacable man such as a Bud Grant has to really be 
heartbroken over this dreadful beginning for Minnesota. I'd like to see him jump up once and do something. <laughs> Second and six from the nine, and there goes Van Egan trying to get outside. McNeil and Bryant can't get him, but there's a flag on the play as Hannon finally brought him down. Though so we'll wait on the call from Chuck Heberling, our referee. In case you joined us a little late, Boletnikov caught a 13-yard pass from Stabler, and later on on a fumble, Charlie Phillips ran 31 yards for a touchdown to make it 14-0 Oakland. The Heberling will march it off from the 10, spotted at the 20, and here's the official call. Illegal use of hands. Number 22, offense. Second down. That's little Art Whittington who was leading the block. Number 22. You can see him pushing. The man he was pushing was Bobby Bryant, and the penalty was called. So it is second and 16 from the 19-yard line. Stabler looking right. Now going to Dave Casper, and the tight end has it to the six-yard line. Uh, Wise, Hannon, and Blair all in there on the hit. I like this call. Second and 16. It's a stop pattern to the tight end. Pick up half of the yardage. Again, here he comes down, stops. Stabler rifles it in there. Plenty of time. You know, you know Coach, the key to that play was that uh, time he had. The blocking right, was plenty fantastic. Of time. Right. Third and a long three from the seven-yard line, and here comes Banasak, bumps at the line of scrimmage, and drives inside the five-yard line. He has to get to the three-yard line for the first down. Here's a score from Los Angeles, and it's a big one. The Rams leading Green Bay 7 to nothing. And in order to put that in its proper perspective, Minnesota can still wind up in the playoffs, even if they lose today, as long as Green Bay loses down south, and they're losing. Well, well they're going for it. Fourth, fourth and inches. Three tight ends again. Casper, Chester, and Ramsey are in there. Minnesota, Benny has the jumbo defense in. The fourth and inches, the ball is just shy of the three-yard line, and that's where they have to get to the three. The running backs are Banasak, number 40, and Van Egan, number 30. Ramsey and Casper are on the left side, so we'll see if they go that way. There they go, and Van Egan goes in for the touchdown for Mark Van Egan, his ninth touchdown of the year, and Bud Grant has to be in shock. It is 20 to nothing in favor of Oakland. Today, we seem to be talking about the offensive line so much, but you can see here why we're talking about them. In close quarters, you should not get a hole like that. But with Upshaw, people like that, you're going to get those holes. Well, Oakland beat him in the regular season, beat him in the Super Bowl, and they're clobbering him again today. The Earl Mann trying to make it 21 to nothing in the first quarter. The spot by Ham, the kick is good. And the Oakland Raiders finishing up, leading 21 nothing. Down in here, you're in a gap defense. If everyone doesn't fill the gap, you have a big hole. That's what happened there. Philadelphia pounded the Giants 20 to 3. So they have to stay alive, hoping that Green Bay will lose to Los Angeles. Ray Guy booms one to Kevin Miller in the end zone, and Kevin's going to take it out to the 10, 15, and upended at the 28 yard line. Davis hitting first, and then you begin. Number 29, who just joined the club, brought him down. You know, uh, uh, Jim and Vinny, two things. If you have to get behind like this, it's good to get behind early. You got time to uh, recover. However, the field position that the Raiders have had has been fantastic. And most of that thanks to the Minnesota generosity, two loose balls. First and 10 on the Viking 18. Here comes Ricky Young. And he gets out across the 25-yard line. 
The man who had a hand on him and couldn't hold him was Monty Johnson. One hand is not enough to bring him down. Jim, this series right now for the Vikings offense is very important. Oh, very definitely, Coach. They got to move that ball. We must also remember the Broncos really came back against the Steelers yesterday at halftime. It looked like they were out of it, you know. Second and three from the Viking 26. On a draw to Ricky Young. He fights to the 30-yard line. Upset because he thought he had a good shot on him was Rod Martin, but Monty Johnson took care of him. There's an interesting note on Minnesota's troubles with their rushing game. And, of course, last week, only 22 yards. In fact, in last week's game, Chuck Foreman, for instance, had only seven yards rushing. Puts, puts tremendous pressure on Tarkington. He's had an excellent year considering that lack of a running game. First and ten on the Viking 30-yard line. Foreman all alone behind Tarkington, and there goes Chuck. Makes a good cut on a tricky surface, and he's dropped at the 35-yard line. Phil Villapiano made the tackle. We have 1.55 to go in the first quarter. Charlie is doing a good thing. He's really staying with the running game for a while because he has to do that to, to make the pass work. Foreman makes a good move here. He, he's fixing to make a move here, but somehow, because of his bad legs, he cannot make those spins that he used to make. Second and four on the Viking 36. Ahmad Rashad wide right. Tucker loads over on the right side. Here goes Foreman again, but he's grabbed from behind and dropped immediately. Big Mike McCoy, nine years out of Notre Dame, 275, drop him. Then he, one of the things the Raiders like to do is keep Big Ted Hendricks, number 83, over the tight end. He always plays on the strong side, and so you see Tucker changing the strength at the last moment so that Hendricks has to play the weak side. Ted Hendricks has already made his size known in this game when he picked off the pass thrown by Fran Targeting. So it's third and four from the 36. Sammy White wide right. Rashad goes left and Foreman is belted right at the line of scrimmage. Monty Johnson really got a lick in there and then Rod Martin came along to help out and that's all for Chuck Foreman. Nowhere to go. Vinny, now that's the second time on third and long yardage that Tarkington has refused to pass. Now, Coach, I don't understand it. Well, he's he's trying to establish some running game, uh, Jim, and it's, it's unsuccessful. He's going to have to go to the air and take his chances. At least on third down. Yeah, that was third and four. Guy Coleman averaging a little more than 39 yards a punt, standing on his 20. Neil Colsey is all alone, and we'll check his hang time. Colsey, a fair catch at his own 29-yard line. 3.9 isn't isn't a bad hang time. It's uh, Ray Guy is in a class by himself. He's he's 4'8", 5'1", 5'2". First and 10 from the Raider 29. Mark Van Egan is out to the 33. The ball wobbly in his grasp, but he held on to it. You know, Carl Eller hasn't played the last couple of weeks, Jim. I think they miss him. They probably do, Coach, because uh, he has been great over the years. And he's been injured, so of course you know how that works. The Oakland Raiders chewing up the Minnesota Vikings 21 to nothing at the start of the second quarter, and the Raiders will put it in play second and six from their own 33. Kenny Stabler has Whittington along with Mark Van Egan, and it's Van Egan out across the 35, dropped at the 36-yard line. We talk about field position graphically then. This illustrates it. Minnesota is in the yellow and Oakland in the blue, and there we'll give you some idea. Benny, they've, they've got three scores, and the longest drive they've had is 35 yards. The game's been played in Minnesota's end of the, end of the field. Which emphasize field position and the importance of it. Coach. Yes, it does. You've been stressing that so much. A third and three from the 36-yard line. Stabler to Cliff Branch, who makes the reception at midfield. Bobby Bryant hit him, but that makes it a first down for Stabler and company at midfield. Well, before we came here, we said this game was, was going to come down to pass rush and pass protection. Now, Stabler has, again, good protection. Plenty of time to throw. 
completes the pass. By the way, Cliff Branch caught only 28 passes in the first 12 games. He's made 18 now in the last three weeks plus today. So he's finishing up on a high note. Stabler giving to Banasak, and Banasak is dragged down by Hannon as they tore the Viking line wide open. You're talking about a left-handed team. Take a look at this hole. You're talking about driving trucks, even milk trucks through there. And Van Egan is so quick. Not fast, he's only about a 4'7 man, but that quickness in football is more important than overall sprinter speed. Mullaney and White were really blown out of there. So second down and two from the 43. Stabler giving to Van Egan, and there's a flag on the play as Seaman made the tackle. You know, uh, Vinny and Jim, one thing that our audience should watch, very interesting, is that Oakland goes on a quick count. They don't fool around and go on a long count. As soon as he puts his hands under, the ball snap. And they take off and go. Well, if they had the Dallas formations, they definitely couldn't do that. No, they line up in a set and go. Well, because they have big, strong, powerful people. I like what they do. They're using their talent properly. That's the slogan. Illegal use of hands. Number 78, offense. The penalty. Second down. Against Art Shell. Pride and poise, as you saw a moment ago. That's the, the big drive here in Oakland. And money. <laughs> St. Louis, Jim Hart passed for three touchdowns, and he's run for two today. The Cardinals are now leading Atlanta 42 to 21. Stabler throwing over to the left side, and he has Boletnikov. He got away from right, and Wise finally brings him down. They'll spot it at the 42-yard line as he went out of bounds. Well, here's, here's Stabler going back again. He has a little more pressure on him this time. And there's a delivery sack at the end. And, of course, Blitnikoff comes back for the ball as well as anybody in football. So it is third and two on the Viking 42. Baltimore down to Buffalo. Buffalo 21 and Baltimore 14 in the fourth. San Diego leading Houston 7 to nothing. That's important for yeah. Houston. They're battling for victory to get the home field advantage in the playoff. So third and two from the Viking 42. Banasak and Van Egan, the running backs. And it is Van Egan across the 40, picks up the first down, still driving to about the 37-yard line. And Bud Grant wondering what to do. The only time they haven't met much. Minnesota beat Oakland back in 1973. They've beaten them two out of three. Uh, Oakland's beaten Minnesota two out of three. Oakland won here. 35 to 13, Oakland chewed them up in the Super Bowl, 32 to 14, and Oakland leads 21 to nothing here in the early second quarter. We'll keep an eye on Bud Grant to see if we can get any kind of a feeling from him as this drive continues. Stabler to Dave Casper, and the big tight end is going to Bradshaw, and he can't hold it. Broken up by Hannon, and how about that? Dave Casper, the tight end, Came around and watch it now. Stabler giving it to Casper. Casper is looking for Morris Bradshaw. And Dave got off a pretty good pass. Bradshaw goes up and at the last minute it is broken up. And I think he might have been able to catch it. And able to knock it out of his grasp. It's a good call from this area of the field because you completed it's a touchdown. And he had him open. He just looped it up too much second and ten from the 37 and there goes van egan and he is stopped as jeff seaman grabbed him and brought him down at the 35. a little better pass jim and he had a, had a score in that. absolutely uh, right <laughs> did you say hart scored two touchdowns running my god Hart. yep jay mm. <laughs> Hart. Well, must huh. have been quarterback sneaks oh sure <laughs> Well, talking about that, Stabler has not rushed for a single yard this season. <laughs> playing it cool and easy. Cool pocket. and easy. So it is a third down play, six to go from the 34 for Stabler. Plenty of time. 
can pump and throw, and it's dropped by Boletnikov. And I think Boletnikov was screened a little bit. Matt Blair cut right in front of him. I think he lost yeah, the ball for right. just a got his left hand second. up there. But Stabler has so much time to throw on this, Jim, that it actually bothered him. Watch him. I know. Watch him. Well, George, they feel that they can dominate the Vikings line. They feel that their offensive line is physically yeah. strong. And They're they going to have to dog them. They can't give them that much time. They're going to have to blitz them and dog them. Especially with the wet field. So fourth and six from the 34. Ray Guy has kicked 22 punts inside the 20 yard line. 22 out of 75. Let's see now if he can angle one into the corner. Kevin Miller standing all alone on his 10 yard line. Guy has had two punch blocks this year. He tries to get it out in the corner and it has gone through. So the Vikings will take over first and 10 on their own 20 yard line. Oakland punishing Minnesota 21 nothing in the second. Oh, that's the tape, man. <laughs> the Minnesota Vikings put the ball in play first and 10 on their own 20 yard line. The Vikings <laughs> have been stung mostly from their own generosity. Two costly fumbles gave Oakland great field position and they cashed them in. Boletnikov took a 13 yard pass from Stabler. Charlie Phillips recovered a Foreman fumble and ran 31 yards for a touchdown. And Mark Van Egan punched over from four after a 10 Hendricks interception. So it is 21 to nothing Oakland and the Vikings trying to shake themselves. Sammy White goes right, Rashad left. And now it's White in motion picked up by Hayes and flag on the play as both sides jump and you know, await the call. When you get behind, the biggest thing you have to do is keep your poise, play your game, stick with a game plan if if uh, if necessary. You don't have to change it this early. The rookie lineman Frank Myers, number 74, is guilty as Yeri takes a punishing shot from John Matusak. Yeri dropped to his knees by Big Matusak. It was Frank Myers, a rookie out of Texas A&M, guilty of the infraction. First and 15 for Tarkington. He goes to the left to Rashad, well, no good. We talked about slipping and falling. That's what happened. Rashad slipped and fell. He was open. Tarkington threw a good ball, but. You know, also the defender fell. If uh, Rashad didn't fall, yeah. it would have been a completed pass. That's yeah. what I meant by wet field. It's usually in favor of the offensive player because he yes. knows where he's going. Yes, it is. He knows where he's going. The defensive man doesn't. doesn't. One of the big plays so far, Ted Hendricks, an interception of a Tarkin and pass. Francis has been intercepted 28 times this year. That's a career high. And 10 of those interceptions have come in the Vikings' last three games plus today. In motion goes Tucker, the tight end. Parking in high down the middle of Sammy White, and he gathers it in at the 32-yard line. That's good for a first down for Minnesota. Well, the, the Vikings have to play their game, get on the board. They can't give them any more points this half. They, they got to get at least seven points. They got to get on that scoreboard, get their confidence back, keep their poise. Plenty, first and of, ten. plenty of time. On the 33-yard line for Minnesota, Foreman, the sole setback, and Tarkin cranking up, going deep. It's picked off by Hayes. Hayes at the 35, calling for blockers. And while he's doing that, he is wow. dropped in his tracks wow. by Bob Tucker, the it's, tight end. Well, here's what happened here. Uh, uh, Tarkington and uh, the receiver mis misread each other. Tarkington threw a... An inside ball, figuring he's going to break inside. The receiver broke outside. And I don't know what he's doing. This is very confusing to me, Coach. Luther Hayes coming up with a second Oakland interception of a Tarkin in pass. Oakland breezing 21 to nothing with 944 to go in the second quarter. And not much Bud Grant can do except hope that the Rams can knock off Green Bay. As Francis Tarkenton, who has tossed up two today, stands and watches. Stabler giving to Whittington, and Arthur fights his way across the 40 to the 42-yard line. Kenny Jim, Stabler having a big year and a big day. Benny, what I what I wanted in this situation, if we had this, was for the defense now to turn this thing around. They the defense has to come up with a big play. 
and and change the momentum here. You know, Vinny, you were saying State was having a big year. Well, that's sort of questionable because he mm -hmm. has 30 interceptions, I think. Yeah, that's right. And that leads the league. Yeah, it does. But even so up here, they say he has played remarkably well. There have been some breakdowns to contribute to the interception. But Whittington battling his way out to the 45-yard line. Well, I know, Vinny, they've been bouncing the ball around. They yeah. say it's been volleyball because he's hitting the receivers, but they've been dropping it, you know? Yeah, you know? if you had watched the yeah. Miami game, there were several should have been completions that went for interceptions because the receiver knocked it over right. to somebody else. I asked John Madden, what player in the team is having a good year that hasn't been recognized? He said Hendricks. He's having a super year, and he didn't even make the Pro Bowl. And mm. Ted, of course, fulfilling Madden's words as we look at John. Made a big interception today. Third and three from the 45. Stabler, a little screen to Van Egan. And Van Egan to midfield. Fumble. Minnesota recovered the ball. Big break. There's that big play we're talking about, Jim. Carl Eller with a uh, broken thumb. And look at that left uh, hand. Eller made the fumble recovery. They need Eller. Uh, they need his leadership. His consistency. Watch Carl Eller battling him. through right. Right. and with that left hand completely encompassed in still, bandages, still, he's still after his man. And as the ball gets away from Van Egan, Eller falls on it. The so Vikings. the Vikings take over on their own 46. First and 10 Vikings on their own 46. Tarkinen under a rush from Hendricks throws to Tucker, the tight end. They set up a screen for Tucker. He has a first down as he goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So they allowed Hendricks to come in and then set up the screen. Well, here's, here's Hendricks dogging to contain Tarkinen. Tarkinen throws back to Tucker. Uh, sort of a middle screen, a real good call. And this guy, Tucker, runs well with the football after the catch. Let's point out to them, Coach, that that's what you want to happen. You want penetration on your screen. You want your linemen to get deep penetration. First and 10 on the rate of 38. Chuck Foreman trying to get outside of Hendricks. Flag on the play. And there's going to be a clip, I believe, against Ricky Young. Ricky Young is throwing, I believe, a clip. And the clip will be against Charlie Phillips. And I'm pretty sure we'll see it. We'll double check. That's pretty obvious that the penalty is going to be against Minnesota, and the flag was thrown just as Young was unloading his block on Phillips. Vinny, we said that the Viking defense had to make a big play, and they did. Now Tarkenton has field position. That was the clip. Holding. Offense number 73. Up. First on. And now they have to take advantage of this field position to get back in this ball game. This is a vital series for the Viking offense. So just to complicate matters, it is first and 20 from the Raider 48-yard line. Francis has some time. Tume leaping at the ball and the pass to Rashad. The reception is made at the 46-yard line of the Raiders, but they have to get inside the 28. Ahmad Rashad, as you see, the 1979 Pro Bowl, he has caught 166 passes in 43 games since he joined the Vikes. And he's averaging about four yards a catch. Second and 18 from the 46. Goodrum put a good block on Tume to keep him away. Tarkin and throws low, almost intercepted by Villapiano. The pass was intended for Foreman. Tume was really putting yeah. some heat on Francis, and Goodrum kept him out. Well, what's, what's taking place? He's got this long yardage to pick up, and they're laying back. The linebackers are getting good depth. He's got time to throw, but nobody's open. Nobody's open. So it is third and 18 on the Raider 46. Remember that screen to Tucker had it first in. The pass to Rashad, no good. Monty Jackson breaking it up. And let's keep an eye on Monty Jackson, an all-pro, formerly with the Rams. Watch him, Coach. Well, Monty Jackson has real good footwork, back pedals, stays on balance, knows the down and distance, 
plays the ball, has good inside position. Good defensive work by Monty Jackson. He's had a fine year. There's been some reports he hasn't had a good year. He's had a, a fine year. Greg Coleman from his own 40 is going to pass to Craig, the tight end, and he's going to go to the 30, and he just about picked up the first down. There is a flag. In fact, flags are all over the place. So wait a minute, and I think we're going to have to find out, first of all, where that tight end Craig was. There he is. Steve Craig, five years out of Northwestern, got inside, and it looks like a first down, but wait and see. The way Minnesota is reacting, the penalty will unscramble that play and go against the Viking. Illegal receiver downfield. Oh, that's a tough break. So out of punt formation, Greg Coleman passed, and Minnesota will be penalized. Nothing going right for the Vikings today. That was a very good call from that area of the field with the score and the time. So with Oakland leading 21 to nothing, Minnesota needed a big play, looked as if they had it, and instead illegal receiver downfield. Spot the ball back at the 44, and they've gone too far. They'll spot it at midfield. It was really a late flag. Now they'll move it again. So Chuck Heberling will give us the call. It's illegal receiver downfield. Ineligible receiver downfield, number 84. And that's Steve Craig, the tight end, who made the reception. So with your putter passing, that complicates matters for the wide receivers. Yes, that, he, he lined up in a wrong position. It's a tough break for the Vikings because uh, they need a play, a big play to get back in this ball game. And I'm sure they worked on this and perfected it and wanted it just, just for this ball game. So it is now fourth down and 27 yards to go for a first down. So Greg Coleman, who came up with the surprise pass and completed it, only to see it go down the drain, will have to kick now from his own 35-yard line. Neil Colsey standing on the Oakland 20. Flag on the play. Line drive kick to Colsey. He plays it at the 20, 25, 30. And he's hit by Studwell and brought down at the 33-yard line. But well, a flag on the play. Then he hears something I've been harping on, Jim. More penalties on the punting game. Preliminary call, a legal procedure against Minnesota. Uh, it's, you see, what, what's taking place is that, uh, first of all, you can't cover a 2.8 line drive kick and uh, on the line and it's refused first time the so Oakland refusing the penalty because they're in fine position they will take over first and 10 on their own 33 yard line leading 21 nothing sometimes a receiver is only downfield six to seven inches they can call it so the Vikings are steaming down 21 nothing. They thought they had gotten a big play. Studwell, Scott Studwell, who made the hit, pacing up and down anxiously. And here goes Van Egan. He's dropped at the 38 and falls forward almost the 39-yard line. Jeff Seaman, who's very busy, along with Matt Blair, making the tackle. Van Egan has gone over the 1,000-yard mark today. It has been all Oakland ever since the Vikings won the toss. Chuck Foreman on a wobbly handoff fumbled. Oakland recovered. Boletnikov took one in on a pass from 13 yards out from Stabler. And Oakland has been holding on to the ball more or less ever since. They move it out to the 45-yard line as Van Egan has dropped just about at the 44. Uh, Jim, they have Holloway in there now at defensive right end in place of Jim Marshall, number 75. That's a big score. The Rams 7, Green Bay nothing. Remember, Philadelphia won. The Green Bay can lose down in Los Angeles, and that takes all the heat off Minnesota. First and 10 on the 44. Stabler unloading to Banasak, and Banasak slips, gets up, and immediately Lyman Smith falls on top of him and drives him out of bounds at the 48. You know, Vinny, what you just said, though, you, nobody likes to back into 
into something, lose, and back into the playoffs, because if you aren't playing well, you aren't going to go anywhere anyway. And of course, for Minnesota, coming off a horrendous performance against Detroit, then having a bad day so far here in Oakland, they certainly couldn't be in any kind of a frame of mind for playoffs. Second down and six from the Raider 48. Van Egan on a good tackle by Jim White. White was able to fight off Gene Upshaw that time, dive across Upshaw's block, and take him down. Jim, a first-round draft choice out of Oklahoma State. Fred Belitnikov, number 25, is coming in. The reason for the applause. Cliff Branch goes out, and you can see Buffalo beat Baltimore 21 to 14. That's a final. So it's third and five from the 48. Belitnikov wide right, Branch left. He came back in. Stabler pumps once down the middle to Branch. He's got it at the 35. Nate Wright upended him at the 35. And I'll Nate Wright is shaken up on the tackle. I tell you, my opinion on this, they got a three-man pass rush. Staber has all day to throw again. You can't cover a racehorse like Branch, number 21. One of the things that a lot of teams are doing, they're using different forms of the nickel and the prevent. And there's more big plays being made against it than there should be. I'm glad you made that point, George, because that's been going around the country. There's been a lot of fans that have well, really protested against the prevent. Nate Wright shaking up on that. As you know, fellas, Minnesota figured to have a big chance today. But a long time ago, a famous columnist named Damon Runyon said, the race is not always to the swift, nor is the battle won always by the strong. But that's the way to bet. Well, when the <laughs> AFC plays the NFC, the AFC has won 30 of the 50 games. In fact, in seasonal confrontations, the NFC's only won once back in 1971. So going into this game, even though Minnesota had everything to win for and Oakland just a practice game more or less, Oakland is burying them 21 to nothing, and once again, the AFC yeah. is loud yeah. and clear. Well, Vinny, you know I picked Oakland at the uh, head of the program. <laughs> well, the big thing that, that uh, Oakland has done, they've, they've taken advantage of the great field position they've had, and Minnesota keeps beating themselves. First and 10 for the Raiders on the Viking 35-yard line. 21 to nothing, Oakland. 446 to the half. Branch in a slot right, but here comes Arthur Whittington. <laughs> Gets a pretty good block from Gene Upshaw, and he is ridden out of bounds inside the 30. They'll spot the ball at the Viking 28. You know, speaking of Whittington, Whittington's a regular. He never expected to be a, a regular back. John Madden expected him to be returning kicks and playing on the special teams, but due to injuries, he's now their regular halfback. You know, down in Texas, they know about Arthur Whittington. He is the third greatest rusher in the history of SMU. The fellas in front of him, number one, Dolk Walker, number two, Kyle Rote, mm. and then Arthur Whittington. Great so company. That ain't no bad gang to hang around with. Second and three from the 28. Here come Russell, and Russell, who doesn't play that much, is hammered. Booker Russell is a rookie out of Southwest Texas. So they're giving Van Egan, Banasek a rest, and you have Whittington and Booker Russell. Kenny Stabler. He has had career highs this year in passes thrown, in completions, in yards gained, also in interceptions. He has thrown for 16 touchdown passes, which is not as good as he has been in the last four years. Third and three from the 28th. And he's going to pass to Van Egan, who makes a catch, and a desperate catch it was, and he's going to lose a yard. He got to the 29. So Mark Van Egan is a good pass receiver. He's caught 25 prior to today. The crowd is saying, go for it. Dave Casper is coming in off the bench. That's what they're going to do. Raymond Chester is coming out. So John Madden wants to finish up the year at the expense of Bud Grant and the Minnesota Vikings. Let's, let's see the pass rush here. Fourth and four from the 29. And Stabler faking, trying to get out of a crowd, passes over the head of Dave Casper. Casper trying to cut 
Branch was also coming over, but the pass over Casper's head. Well, they had a little, little better pass rush. They ran a stunt, and now watch, watch number 87, Casper, slip here. And that was exactly when Stabler pumped. Made, he took the first pump, then made, he had to throw. Made him overthrow, yeah. Too late, yes. Big day for Jim Hart. He passed for three touchdowns, ran for two. Cardinals 42, Atlanta 21, a final. So Atlanta will be a wide card, but they'll be on the road. Seattle leading Kansas City 20 to three in the second quarter. Al Hunter went 54 yards for a touchdown. San Diego on a 37-yard pass from Dan Fouts, leading Houston 14 to 10. Houston is battling for a home field advantage. Tarkin throwing to Foreman who bobbles and is dragged down. Rod Martin hit him at the 30-yard line. Foreman uh, just did hold on to it. You know, another thing that's taking place here with a 21-point lead, the short passing game that Tarkin does so well to the tight end of the backs is now being taken away. So Tarkin has to go a little deeper. Take a look at big John Matusak. 6'7", 275. Look at those hands. He tries to steer Ron Yarry right out of his uniform, then took a swipe with his left hand but couldn't get it. Second and eight from the 31 for Tarkenden. Both backs release. Tarkenden releasing to Chuck Foreman, and down he goes. Monty Jackson there to make sure he stays down. Speaking of John Matusik, one of the best deals that Al Davis ever made was picking him up for $100 it's like a first round pick. He's having a fine year. He's young. He's got a good attitude. He has it all ahead of him. They got him for nothing. Well, and another Davis, fella. Well, Davis is a go getter, Penny. Another fella is Pat Tume, number 67, who is doing a great job right. giving Tarkin in a bad time. Right. He can rush the passer. Well, you see, halftime, the Rams seven, Green Bay nothing. Third and four from the 35 for Tarkin. And both backs go out. And it's to Ricky Young, and he's dragged down by Martin at the 41-yard line. A flag on the play that would have been enough for a first down, but let's wait and see. Ricky Young, by the way, it'll be holding, and it's against Oakland. So that'll be a first down for the Vikings. Ricky Young starting his 52nd consecutive game today. That's the longest starting streak among NFL running backs. Young has not missed a game in his four-year career. Defensive holding, number 58, refused. First Monty time. Johnson, guilty of holding for Oakland. The penalty refused. The play went to the 41, and that's where the Vikings put it in play first and 10. On their own 41, we have 220 to the half, 21 to nothing, Oakland. White is right, Rashad left. In motion is Bob Tucker. And Foreman on a draw, but Brown is right there to bury him. What a find by Rod Martin, number 53, the two-year man out of SC. Coach George, I'm curious. Was Richie, Rick, Ricky Young the lead blocker on this play? The whole scene to be there for a split second. No, I don't guess he was. No, it's, it's, a, it's a sprint draw off of that, that strong action uh, that Tarkin and likes. It's a counter play, but there wasn't any hole. The two-minute warning here in the Oakland Coliseum, 21 to nothing, Oakland. Two minutes left to the half, Oakland leading Minnesota 21 to nothing as the Vikings put it in play on their own 42-yard line, second down, and about nine and a half yards for a first down. Tucker, the tight end, moves to the right side. Tarkin trying to get on the scoreboard before the half. Pumps, cranks, and goes deep. He's got Rashad. Rashad to the 10, to the five. Touchdown, Ahmad Rashad. For Rashad, his seventh touchdown pass of the year. Well, I'll I, I tell you what happened here. They dogged him. Tarkington got outside of the dog, had the time, and spotted Rashad behind the secondary. You know what was so interesting on that play is that Tarkington actually had probably more time than any other play, you know, in they, the other quarters. They picked up, they picked up the dog. See, watch the stunt in the dog. Now he rolls out away from it just enough. He wants to go short, then he goes deep. 
Rashad kept moving. The ball was a little bit short, but it was deep enough to... And then Rashad made that great angle. Yeah. The point by Dan Meyer is no good, just to complicate matters that's, for Minnesota. That's the first one he's missed. Dan hey, Meyer I... was 34 for 34, and he misses it. Let's see what happened. That's Krause, the holder. Remember, he had a concussion last week. High snap well, slightly to Krause's right shoulder. He still had time. Got it down. Yeah. Dan Meyer kicked. End over end, and he missed it to the left as it hit the upright Boy. and kicked off to the left. Well, that, that was a big play for the Vikings to give them some encouragement back in the ballgame. So it is 21 to 6 in favor of the Oakland Raiders on that touchdown pass to Ahmad Rashad. The 58 yard pass from Tarkington to Rashad for Ahmad's seventh. And now for the first time, Minnesota will kick off. 21 to 6, Oakland. You know, Vinny, we we're talking about uh, Rashad and that angle. He took a look. And then, being a smart player, yeah. took the angle because he knew he didn't have the speed to do it straight away. You know, I I listed uh, Stabler as one of the best two-minute quarterbacks in all of football. It'll be interesting to see if he goes into his two-minute drill here. Rick Danmeyer will be kicking off from Minnesota. Danmeyer, one year out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, missing his first point after all year. He's now 34 for 35. And he is talking to Matt Blair for the moment, so hold everything as Dan Meyer now heading for the sideline. Dan Meyer evidently calling a timeout as the Vikings were lining up to kick off. Maybe he wants to know about an onside kick, but this I, is almost like announcing it. I think that yeah, right. If that's I think there must there may have been uh, misinformation. He wanted to make sure everybody's together. What are we gonna do? Are we gonna kick it down there? Or are we gonna go for an onside now? He's got to kick it down there. <laughs> so whatever thought he had, Rick Dittenmeyer <laughs> decided he better double check, and that blows the coverage. Yeah, you think he's going to kick it down there, huh, George? Send him a telegram. <laughs> what a day for the Vikings as the year comes to an end football-wise for the Oakland Raiders. Going back is Stewart and Whittington. Arthur Whittington, number 22, will be the deepest man. Then Joe Stewart, a rookie out of Missouri, will be the short man, and Dan Meyer is ready to kick off. Uh, we'll see whether he does or not. With a minute and 50 seconds to the half, it is 21 to 6 Oakland. Dan Meyer will kick it off, and going way over to his right is Whittington. The ball hits and will be picked up as he slips at the four. Whittington at the five, and he better look out for safety. He was brought down Whoa. by Turner, Whoa. and Turner got him at about the one-yard line. John that, Turner, rookie out of Miami. Bad judgment on Whittington there. So Arthur decides to run it from the four. Go straight got away ahead. for the moment, and there's Turner grabbing him when and he, dropped him. When you get down to that end, you don't want to be dancing around. You want to be going straight ahead. Well, the only people that are Jeez. allowed to do that are established stars, running runners that are established to the point where their coaches can't really say anything to them. You ever had any of those, George? <laughs> just a couple. Yeah, just a couple. You know, uh, now now the Vikings have to use their timeouts. First and ten on the Raider one as they push it out to the five-yard line with a minute and 38 seconds to go to the half. No timeout yet. Van Egan and Banasak are the workhorses as they moved it to the five. But if I was Minnesota, I would move a couple of extra men over to my right side. You know, that's what we did when we played the, the Raiders, and they still ran there. They still, <laughs> they made, yardage. still made yardage. We moved our whole line over there. <laughs> we had McDole over there. <laughs> Oh, wow. As Stabler brings him out, it is second and six from the five. It is Van Egan out to about the seven or eight yard line. Bill Wise of Minnesota thought that Raymond Chester had done something illegal, but the officials say no. Now they use their timeout, Benny. Kenny Stabler talking to John Madden. From a strategy standpoint, this is a, a very important 58 seconds, Jim. If in the range, right in the range, coming down now again. If Stabler can get a first down here, 
they're going to run the clock out. If Minnesota can stop them, they can put the punt block on, or they'll have field position to be in a position to get a field goal or score. Coach, you said something about why, when you were coaching Washington, they never lost in the rain. You like rain. Oh, right? we, we love to love to play in the rain. I think we're undefeated in the rain, Jim. Third and four on the seven. And it's Van Egan following Vanisak's block. Nate Allen hit him low, and that's not enough because he just kept driving over that low tackle by Allen and brought it out to the 10-yard line. However, he had to get beyond the 11-yard line for a first down. So there's a yard shy of the first down. It'll be fourth. And we're waiting to see Ray Guy come in. But Guy is still standing on the sideline with about, 52 seconds of the half. Jim, did you, what'd you feel about the rain? George, I hated it. You know, sometimes a player don't see it the same way that a coach. Oh, there's yeah. Ray Guy going in now. But just to get away from that for a minute, would you try to block this? Oh, kick? yeah, I'd go for the block kick. Yeah, definitely. And, well, Kevin uh, Miller is standing at midfield, and we'll see about the Vikings coming to block it. You got to pull everything out and go all out, and, and uh, even if you don't get the block kick, hurry them, and you still should have field position. Guy has had two kicks blocked this year. His longest punt, 69 yards, the longest in his career, 74. And we'll look at the hang time. Watch the Vikings trying to come. Got it away. Kevin Miller will come up to the 45 yard line to the 40. And they're going to bury him right there at about the 38 yard line as they drive him out of bounds. So we have 42 seconds to the half. And even though Minnesota did not get much of a return, Guy doesn't allow that anyway. They're right. in good field That's position. Right. You aren't going to block many kicks on Ray Guy. And what a choice that was, Jim to take him in the first round. And, and it took a lot of guts to take a, a punter like that in the first round. Well, I was, did Al Davis do that? Al did it. Tremendous judgment. Well, I hate to keep saying good things about him, but he well, talked to me once and he told me something that I thought was absolutely true. You can never have two great backs in the same backfield. That's right. First and 10 from the Raider 39. Young and Foreman behind Tarkington. Tarkington trying to get on the boards, goes to the sideline, and it is intercepted by Davis. Davis lateral the ball to Jackson, and Monty Jackson is out across midfield. That's the third interception thrown by Francis. There's a flag. In fact, there are a couple of flags down, so let's wait and see. I think it's, it might be a forward lateral. Mm -hmm, it looked that way. Looked that yeah. way. Tarkinen looking to his left, trying to get his receiver and then to go out of bounds. Now Mike Davis, this. one year out of Colorado, no chance Set to get off that to in. Monty Jackson. No chance to get that ball in, Vinny. They had him covered front and back. Well, we're waiting on the call from Chuck Heberling. There's the Davis cutting right in See front that? of Ahmad Rashad, uh, then handing the ball to Monty Jackson. Well, what would you say? Take a look at the handoff. Looks like it's forward, doesn't it? Looks forward to me. We'll see if that's what it was now. Chuck Heberling, our referee, and for targeting three interceptions today. So Stabler came into the game having thrown 30, and with three interceptions, Tarkinen has now thrown 30. So the members of the 30-30 club are here in the Oakland Coliseum, well, and neither one is very happy about uh, it. When you throw as much as these two guys do, and, and you, you don't have a running game, you're going to have interceptions. We have an illegal forward pass against the offense on the run back. That's refused. We have clipping on the run back against the offense. That's accepted first down. Hmm. So the Raiders were guilty of the illegal handoff as well as a clip, and they take it first and 10 on their own 25-yard line. Stabler giving to Van Egan. Van Egan going around Blair, and it's fumbled, and Minnesota oh. recovers. On the Oakland 33, at the bottom is Randy Holloway, a rookie out of Pittsburgh, who made that. <laughs> they changed their game plan. They went the other way. They went to the right instead of the left. Well, this is the time, Coach, when you've got to just really hold the ball. Oh, There's only a few ball. seconds. You're in your own territory. Right you don't there. want to go for the extra yard. You know, the Vikings are getting some breaks here. They can get back in this ballgame. 
It's 21 to 6 Raiders. There you can see fumble. Look at that Minnesota. Five turnovers. Foreman stays in the block. Parking and throwing deep to Rashad. No good. Rashad making the reception long after he left the playing field. Yeah. And boy, I tell you, Tarkenham was getting some more heat. And yes. among others, the guy who's really applying it, you'll see him coming in from the left side, Matusek and Tume. Delivery sack, George. Yes, he was. He didn't have time to throw that ball the way he wanted to, and then Rashad slipped as he was going out of bounds. Well, I think it's time for the old alley-oop pass. Sent about three receivers down, throw it high in the end, jump. 18 Rashad. seconds for the Vikings Rashad. to get on the scoreboard. Rashad's great at that. It is second and 10 on the Raider 34. Slot right, White is inside Washington. Parking in with Myers blocking on Toomey. The pass to Rashad intercepted. The fourth interception thrown by Francis Tarkenden. And standing down there is Monty Jackson. He looked like an outfielder fielding a fungo. It just came right to him. And for Tarkenden, four interceptions, 31 for the year. Live by the sword, you die, die by, by the, the sword. sword. But Vinny, it's not Tarkenden's fault, oh. really. Rashad uh, slipped on this particular play. And Mike McCoy had good pressure on him, too. Yes. We didn't see the slip, but he did oh. slip, and he got up again. Let's Maybe take we can angle. see it here. He had already gotten up. So Monty Jackson picks it off. First and 10 Raiders on their own 20-yard line. And they will just protect their quarterback, who is David Hum. They're not even going to allow Stabler to be out there, and that's fine. <laughs> that's a good Paul call. Hum. That's a good oh. call. The time has run out in the first half. The Oakland Raiders holding on to a 21-6 lead over Minnesota. Back live in New York, I'm Brent Musburger, and it still looks as though Atlanta is going to host the wild card game, even though the Falcons surrendered 42 points. It has been a wild weekend for all of us at CBS Sports. It never ceases to amaze me what we can do with our hardware. Now, for example, we are in constant touch with all of the games around the league. You can see inside our control room, our producer, Mike Pearl, there in the blue shirt bending over. The director is Bob Fishman. And on the telephones, Hal Klassen in the white sweater, Gene Peterson on the left, as the producers tell him, how many minutes are left in each game? That's it. Yuck it up in there, Gene. <laughs> All right, it began yesterday for us when we were down at RFK Stadium in Washington. This was the game that would knock the Redskins out of the playoffs. It would come on a punt by Bragg. It was Steve Schubert fielding it at the 27-yard line. Two critical blocks, and down the left side he came. Watch his teammate, number 30, prop him up right there. And Schubert goes in, and for the Redskins, a very disappointing end after a sensational beginning. Then this morning, we were in Philadelphia. It was Jaworski going long to Carmichael. Watch Harold on the alley-oop, tip it, and then come down with a neat reception. Wilbert Montgomery today rushed 24 times for 130 yards, the most unheralded big rusher in the league this year. He breaks Steve Van Buren's Philadelphia's all-time rushing record. Then we were in St. Louis. It looked as though the Falcons would explode and win it big, particularly right here. It was Dennis Pearson on a kickoff return. Now watch number 40, George Franklin, come up and throw the block of this Sunday afternoon. A 100-yard kickoff return. It was tied at 14, but the afternoon belonged to Jim Hart. 22 of 40, three touchdowns passing and two touchdowns rushing, including that one right there. Then we went to the West Coast. David Whitehurst in the Los Angeles Coliseum going long. Pat Thomas with a sensational diving interception. And he tiptoed back to the 32 before Green Bay realized he was a hot body. Then we were in Oakland, and it was Chuck Foreman. This fumble right here, picked up by Phillips, and the Oakland Raiders were in command. And if Oakland holds up, then Atlanta still would host the wild card game next Sunday against the Philadelphia Eagles. And the NFL Today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local station. You know, it has been one of the most unbelievable Sundays around the league, even in the games where there was nothing at stake. For example, here in New York, we had winds gusting up to 30 miles an hour. And look at a couple of the light standards out at Shea Stadium. Just nodding in the afternoon wind over there in Flushing. 
Watch this play. Danny White from the shotgun. He will hit Billy Joe Dupree over the middle. Dupree will cough it up and watch the bounce right to Tony Dorsett. Dorsett zips six points for the Dallas Cowboys. Yes, indeed, Jane, they are peaking at the right time. Now, the New York Giants went to the fake punt. Screen pass, Brian Kelly. He's hit, and he coughs the ball up against the Eagles. Dave Jennings says, let me out of here, and he's run out of bounds. No first down. This is the hit of the day. Manning to Childs against Tampa Bay, and Childs stayed in the ballgame following that blast. Watch Chuck Munsky. Muncy, the critical touchdown. Breaks a tackle. It was 17-10. The Saints over the Buccaneers. This was the fake punt of the afternoon. Mike Wood of St. Louis. He loses concentration with the ball looking for the receiver. Got to go down, pick it up. Dave Steef is still getting open. There he is for a big game. And Steef enjoyed a fine afternoon. Eight for 169 yards. But San Francisco, first it was Steve DeBerg, lost because of a knee injury. Then they went to Scott Bull, out because of an injury. Then number 88, Freddie Solomon came in at quarterback. Then it was the left-hander, Bruce Threadgill, who picked it up. Who was the best? Solomon. He show you this play right here. On the broken scramble, he gets in, but Detroit still was able to win it easily. Now, again on the home field advantage, it has to be Atlanta, simply because either Green Bay or Minnesota really figures to lose now, and if either of those teams do lose, next Sunday on CBS, it will be the Philadelphia Eagles against the Atlanta Falcons. That's the way it's been running all day, and we see nothing to indicate that that is going to be changed. Right now, let's send you back to Vin Scully in Oakland. It's halftime in the Oakland Coliseum. The rain has let up. And the Oakland Raiders capitalizing on six Minnesota turnovers, four of them interception, leading 21 to six. We await the start of the second half here in the Oakland Coliseum, 21 to six Raiders. Here again, graphically, we'll illustrate field position with Minnesota in the yellow and Oakland in the blue. And anything particular about that second quarter battling come to mind, George? Well, again, it shows that field position, the National Football League is, is a, a game of field position. And when you get field position, you have to take advantage of it. The uh, Raiders had excellent field position. They scored. When the Vikings had field position, they didn't take advantage of it. They, they coughed the ball up and threw an interception. We should explain that the X in front of each line, where they took over, and then at the end of the line, You'll see what happened, interception or a punt or one of them for Minnesota. They took the ball on their own 30-yard line and went all the way for a touchdown. Then they had a summary on the Oakland 35-yard line, and that's when they had the interception in the end zone by Monty Jackson. So graphically, then, you can see what field position has meant in the second quarter. Minnesota will be kicking off and of course the Vikings no doubt got some kind of a pep talk right now the way things are shaping up Green Bay is losing in at Los Angeles 14 to nothing so if Green Bay loses Philadelphia will have won the wild card and Minnesota will still wind up in the playoffs even though they're being pushed around here in the Coliseum Minnesota will win their division it's a tough way to win it but they'll take it any way they can. Dan Meyer kicking off and he rolls it down to the Raider 30 yard line and Ramsey Derek Ramsey returns it to the 35 where it will be first and 10 for Oakland and coach George when you're talking about field position right away Oakland has field position. yes right away 30 we consider 35 yard line on in is good field position Number 11, David Hum, four yeah. years out of Nebraska on a fifth round draft choice in 75 will take over for Kenny Stabler now. First and 10 on the Raider 35 yard line. Bradshaw goes right, Branch goes left, and instead they go right into the line with Van Egan stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. This this first series for the Viking defense is very important. If they're going to get back in, they have to stop them. Well, they picked up two yards at second and eight. John Madden, who has seen his team fail to make the playoffs for the first time since 1971, and only twice in the last 12 years. 
Palm to the second man, Arthur Whittington. He has Upshaw blocking. He runs into Upshaw, fumbles out of bounds, so it's still rate of ball at the 36. Good, good defense. They strung it out. They got across the line of scrimmage. No chance. Use the sidelines as a tackler. You know what's good about it, Coach? They're getting wise to the fact that Oakland's running to the left. <laughs> Boy, they are. <ought> <laughs> you know, speaking of John Madden, he's done an excellent job here, Benny. Just a tremendous job over the years. He's a marvelous young coach. He's had his team in the playoffs in eight of the last ten years. Six times his team has won ten or more games. Third and nine, and David Hum, another left-hander. Off the hands of Nate Allen, intended for Dave Casper, but Allen is beside himself because he had an interception and let it get away. Whoops! Jardell Middleton on a four-yard run has gotten Green Bay on the scoreboard. Rams 14, Green Bay 7. Seven minutes and four seconds remaining in the third quarter. And, of course, Philadelphia, having won their game, they are hoping that Green Bay will lose. The Ray guy standing on his own 22 yard line will be punting and Kevin Miller standing on his 25 for Minnesota. It is 21 to 6 Raiders the start of the third quarter. Guy a poor kick there's a flag on the play the ball hits on the 42 yard line goes out at the 40 but let's wait on the interpretation of the flag. You know, uh, Benny and Jim, you've heard me say this. There's too many penalties on the kicking game, and since we changed the rules to a get a legal man downfield on that, that kick. that's it right there. To get more returns, this is what we get. You shouldn't have to keep punting over, punting over, punting over. In uh, other words, the rule was put in so that ineligible receiver downfield, number 54, offense, refused. First down. To help the return game. Yes, to help the yeah. return, man. And it's not working, though. I don't think so. I think it, it slowed the game down. First and 10 on the Viking 40-yard line. They refuse the penalty. They have good field position, and Chuck Foreman gets to the 45-yard line before he is brought down there. At the bottom of that pile, fellow's done a good job. Rod Martin, a two-year man out of USC. And many times, that... That downfield, Vinny and Jim, is just a, a judgment call again. He may only be downfield a little bit, but it's a penalty. See? And of course, Minnesota is still grumbling about that pass from Coleman to Craig that was ruled he was downfield illegally. Chuck Foreman to midfield and is dropped there. Monty Johnson hit him and dropped him. You know, uh, the linemen always want to run the ball. Now it looks like the Minnesota offense has a spark. Well, why do the linemen always want well, to Well, they want to take them. off and block, and uh, they don't want to just be throwing the ball, throwing the ball, throwing the ball. They want, to, they want to do something. In this situation, that looks like it's a good sign. You know, when I was in Cleveland, our linemen always wanted to, uh, to, to block for the run. Yeah. First and 10 from midfield. Sammy White, wide right. Tucker over in motion to the right side. Rashad goes left. Tarkini over the middle, and it was intended for Bob Tucker. Wow. Good call, but uh, Fran had to throw it sooner than he wanted to, Jim. It was set up. Watch him. See, he, he, it didn't get a chance to form. That's Charlie Filior, six feet nine, number 77. And when Filior's coming, you're in a rush, not only to throw over him or around him or under him. I think that guy's going to develop into a football player. That's Kenny Stabler, whose back is bothering him a little bit. So they're resting him. Second down and 10 from midfield. Tucker in motion to the right. A quick handoff to Ricky Young. And he's across the 45 and drives to the 40-yard line. If they spot it at the 40, he has a first down, but I don't think they will. They'll figure his See, knee hit the ground, so he now, has a yard to go. Now, we talked about field position. The Vikings started on their 40. Now, they have to make something out of that field position. If you don't, put points on the board even if it's just a field goal when you when you have field position it's going to be difficult to win third and one on the Raider 41 Robert Miller is in there with Foreman oh. and Foreman is grabbed behind the line of scrimmage by Mike McCoy yeah. and big McCoy another guy up front who's yeah. big 6'5 275 number 76 you'll see him fire through right there but it looked like they were slanting to their left the offense is right now you see, 
there's a, a third and one. Now they have to punt the football. The center had that assignment, didn't he, Coach? Should have it. But it's a difficult job. Yeah. Uh, if he's uh, slanting that way, that he, only slant, gets, yeah. he only gets a piece of them. Yes. That's Neil Colsey exactly. standing all alone on his 20-yard line. Neil, four years out of Ohio State. Greg Coleman in pass will now punt from his own 45, angling for the sidelines, and he will kick it out of bounds. And it's inside the 10-yard line. Well, let's watch the official to see. He looks like he's going to spot it at the 12. So it is Oakland 21, Minnesota 6. Only 12 coaches have won more than 100 games, and you're looking at two of them, John Madden and Bud Grant. First and 10 for the Raiders on their own 12-yard line. David Hum giving to Mark Van Egan, and he's out to the 15 and falls forward to the 16-yard line. Two injuries that we should report. Hum is in there for Kenny Stabler. The preliminary report on Stabler, a sore back. They're working on the lower right side of Monty Jackson on the Raider bench. Nate Wright, who made a tackle earlier in the game, suffered a broken right arm, and so Nate Wright is finished. And David Hum had to hold on to it, and he's dropped at his 14-yard line. Well, he missed the handoff. Banisak slipped. Slip. Yeah, missed the handoff, and Hum, Hum did the best thing he could. Put the ball away and go forward. That's why we're talking about a wet field and how it affects uh, individual play, Coach. So you did a great job in Washington winning in the rain. Well, our, our players enjoyed the rain. Uh. Third and eight from the 14. David Hum looking over the middle with all kinds of time. Sidearms with the Cliff Branch. And Branch is taken out by Bobby Bryant at the 25-yard line. A side armor by David Hum. He had, he had about five seconds to throw in that one. Watch this. Branch is really the last receiver. He was looking right side, strong side, and had time to come way back over here to the offside. So the Raiders pick up a first down. Ball just shy of the 26-yard line. Bradshaw wide right, branch left. Whittington and Van Egan. And Hum is going to show the folks he can throw to branch. No good. Bobby Bryant, along with Hannon, were there. And branch had them both beaten. Yes, he did. The ball was a little short. Good call. Good first down call. Didn't this look a little like face guarding to you, coach? See what I'm saying? Yeah, just got it. Bobby Bryant just got his hand in there. The ball had been thrown long. He wouldn't have had a chance to get his hand in there. They don't call that very much, Jim. I guess you're right. So, David Hum right had there. thrown only 15 passes all year, so you can't blame him if he's a little rusty. Second and 10 from the Raider 25. On a draw to Whittington. And they punish him. Carl Eller, Jeff Seaman hit him hard. Yes, we're looking at Carmelo, who actually had been needed very badly by the Vikings. He's got that bad arm. He gets stopped there, but he continues to pursue. And in football, you should always pursue because you never know when you're going to make the tackle. Eller almost 70 pounds heavier than hey. Arthur Whittington. He really drilled him. Hum flips across to his tight end, Dave Casper. And Casper goes down at the 44-yard line of Oakland, and it's a first down to the big tight end. Well, here's a three-man rush by the Vikings. They're in a 34 defense. They give Hum plenty of time to survey the field and pick the open man. Here he comes underneath. Great shot by a cameraman. You could see Casper coming, coming into underneath. that uh, play. Yeah. Yeah. Fred Bolitnikov is in there going wide right. Cliff Branch goes wide left. First and ten on the 44 of Oakland. Van Egan and Whittington behind the hump. Arthur Whittington grabbed by Jim White, and White brings him down as he gets out to about the 47-yard line.
Whittington in his rookie year has rushed for seven touchdowns. But he might be a comer. Second and six. They'll spot the ball just shy of the 48 of Oakland. Branch in a slot inside Bolitnikov to the left. Casper the tight end on the right side. Arthur Whittington bursting for it. Not enough for the first down. He has about a yard to get it. In fact, they figure his knee touched the ground a yard more than less than that. So it'll be third and about two. He had real good uh, acceleration on that. Uh, yes, play. he did. He's about a 4-4-4-5 four, 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 man, and that's about as fast as you get. Third and two on the Viking 48-yard line. Three tight ends, Casper, Chester, and Ramsey. Ramsey, the tight end on the left side. 16-0. Vanisak. First down, and he took a ride. He reached out and grabbed Upshaw's jersey, and then he just followed Upshaw. Well, Vinny, that's a very good point. I'm going to take a little different viewpoint. I think he reached out and pushed Upshaw. There, he's got a good grip of him. <laughs> so you push him to get him a little faster, get him kind of out of your he, way. He wants to get him out of the way. Hey, get, come on, big boy, move, move it. it up. Get, move it. Get Give it that extra step. He's got it. Yes, sir. To the 43, first and 10. There's Manisak. Said before the game this would be his last game. Bradshaw in motion to the left. Tom play action fake to Vanisak, passing to Van Egan, who drops it, and there's a flag on the play. Vanisak's been a, a great back, Vinny. Tremendous credit to the Raiders in the National Football League. 13 years for Vanisak. Yeah. What's his greatest attribute, Coach? Oh, I think just determination, steady, doesn't make mistakes, that's, always, always, always ready to play. That's what I wanted to hear. That's, Great attitude. I use that word a lot. Yeah, that's, Great a, attitude. that's the type of guy I like. They'll be singing in Philadelphia, Upside, Los Angeles offense, 21, Green Bay 7. Repute. Willie Miller Second scored nine. a 21-yard pass from Pat Hayden. And, of course, as the Rams chew up Green Bay, Philadelphia's hopes get better and better. Philadelphia won. If Green Bay loses, Philadelphia has won a wild card. And they'll be singing in Minnesota. Yes. <laughs> so it is second and ten on the Viking 43. David Harmon there for Stabler. Side arms to Raymond Chester. Chester to the 40, and Jim Marshall brings him down inside the 35-yard line. You know, that was First a screen, down. a screen to the tight end, Raymond Chester. And they dogged him, and the fact that he's left-handed here allowed him to sidearm that ball perfectly. And it really did help him, yeah. but he's a sidearm slinger. He's, he's thrown it to get away from the, from the uh, rusher. First and 10 on the Viking 33-yard line. Branch in a slot right inside Bradshaw, and there goes David Hom again. Going down the right sidelines, and he's got his mind, Bradshaw, and he's brought down at the 18-yard line, and the Raiders are on the move again. Well, the, the Raiders, Nate uh, Wright is out of there now, and they got number uh, 27, John Turner, taking his place. They went right to work on him. In case you, you missed it, right a broken arm. Yeah. When you get a new man, you should go to work on it. That's good football. First and 10 on the Minnesota 18. Branch in a slot inside Bradshaw. They go left. Van Egan trying to get some running room, and he's dragged down by Randy Holloway, the rookie out of Pittsburgh. And for Bud Grant, once he finds out that the yeah. Packers are being beaten, it's a yeah. day off. One thing about Bud, he has, he has done a great job in Minnesota over the years. He's, he's always had his team ready to play, and, and I know he doesn't want to back into this thing this way either. You know, both Bud Grant and John Madden, when they finished their collegiate playing, both coaches were drafted by the Philadelphia Eagles. Madden, however, had some injuries and didn't play, but Bud Grant did. Second and 14 from the 23. I'm going to Cliff Branch. Branch trying to get some running room, but he can't fool Nate Allen. And Allen is right there to bring him down. 
Well, the, the Vikings have changed their tactics a little bit. They're going after them. They're dogging. They lined right up in it that time. Hum read it. They picked it up and he got it off. And he's still throwing sidearm, coach. He's got a good strong arm. We uh, scrimmaged these guys at uh, Santa Rosa and I was impressed with him. We had a rookie uh, veteran, young veteran scrimmage and he looked very good. He looks good right now. Spot the ball at the Viking 19 yard line. So it's third down, just about 11 yards to go for David Hum and the Raiders. And here comes Arthur Whittington. Good block by Art Shell. And he makes his move. Big Art Shell going to block and little Arthur Whittington moving inside the 15. He did not get a first down, however. He's got a ways to go and they want him to go for it. But Errol Mann is coming in. As we look at this, that's you can see thing. that blocking, man. When you say big Art Shell, that's the secret of the Oakland Raiders. Big, strong lineman. I used to tell Al Davis that uh, he's got the Pro Bowl lineman right here. He doesn't have to <laughs> go to the Pro Bowl to look for him. He always had him right here. Oh, that's yeah. big and strong, Coach. Arrow Man has missed his last three field goal attempts this year. He's trying to break a slump. The spot is down at the 20, a 30-yard field goal is good. There's a flag on the play. Hold everything. Take another look at Errol Mann's field goal attempt. He was 10 for 18. The hold by Hum. The kick is good. There's a legal procedure against the Vikings. Naturally, the Raiders will take the three points. The Raiders, however, I think are wondering as Gene Upshaw comes out to talk to Chick Heberling about whether they could have gotten a first down on the penalty. That's what they're talking about. Well, let's see. If you get the first down, you'll take those three points off right. and, and give your offense confidence to go and in and score. Chuck Heberling wants to double check. We have the legal procedure against the defense. 12 men on a field. We're going to measure. Well, they're going to measure to see if the penalty would give Oakland a first down. Then they would take the three points off the board, hold it at 21-6, and have a first and goal. Boy, it looks like they have they have the first down. It's awfully close, and with the crowd standing down there. It, That's Gene Upshaw talking to Chuck Heberling. Now we'll get a call again. 12 men on the field against the defense is refused. They didn't make three the first down, so they'll take the three oh. points, and the Raiders lead 24 to 6. Oakland was so close, inches away, yeah. but the inches were as much as a mile, so they'll take the three. Ray Guy kicking off, Oakland leading the Vikings 24 to 6, and Washington watches the ball sail over his head into the Viking end zone, and so Minnesota will put it in play. First and 10 on their own 20 yard line, as Ray Guy kicks it through. Oakland scored 21 points in the first quarter. Francis Tarkenton trying to catch up has tossed four interceptions. There were two Minnesota fumbles, so with six turnovers, Oakland has had everything its way. Raiders now leading 24 to 6. First and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Sammy White wide right, Ahmad Rashad left, and the running backs of Foreman and Young. As Tucker goes in motion to the right, there's a give to Foreman, and he's going to run into people, and down he goes. Filipiano and Filior brought him down. Filior number 77. Jim, that's that sprint draw again. Last time he went inside, the hole was closed. This time he tried to bounce outside and there wasn't any hole. Foreman had to pay a price. He really was sandwiched by Villapiano and Filior. Well, with that, Vinny with, and Jim with that 34 defense, the extra linebacker, that's a hard play to uh, Once run. Once that way, look at that. That's <laughs> true, but we're not looking at the real Chuck Foreman. He's really hurting in my opinion. So second and ten, maybe nine and a half on the 20. Tarkinen looking left, now decides to go over the middle, high, but Foreman makes the catch. 
dives forward to the 34 yard line and it's a first down for Minnesota. Rod Martin yeah. at the bottom number 53. Tarkington did a fine job of reading the defense. He had excellent protection and he found Foreman on a stop pattern. So first, first and down. 10 for Tarkenton. He is 9 for 19 for 131 yards. One touchdown, but four interceptions. Stabler was 9 for 15 for 88 yards and one touchdown. Stabler did not throw for an interception. First and 10 from the 34. Tarkenton over the middle to Robert Miller, and he takes a ride to the 45, and that should be enough for a first down if they spot it at the 45. And it stopped raining, Vinny. There's Tarkin going back, looking downfield, then he sees Miller curling in underneath, picks him up, and they get another first down. That's his game right there, Jim. Yes, he needs to be ahead sometimes to use it, though. Back-to-back -back first downs on passes from Tarkin, so he'll try his luck again. This time he gives it to Ricky Young, and he gets to the 49-yard line of Oakland. He got away from Monty Johnson, and Villapiano was there to wrap him up. They pick up six yards. So it'll be second and four on the Raider 49. Bud Grant saw his club fall behind 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. And it's been a painful process ever since trying to catch up. It is now 24 to 6, Oakland. Bob Tucker in motion to the right. And Robert Miller. Boy, did he take a lick. Rod Martin hit him very hard, number 53. Martin is 6'2 and 2'10. One of the problems Oakland has had, they have not had their interior linebackers, right. Johnson and yeah. Hall, ever in the same game. Al Davis told me last night he thinks this Martin's going to be a good one, and, and they're actually uh, glad that he's getting a little work late in the year. They're, they're sorry that uh, Hall's hurt, but they feel this guy's going to develop into a good one. Ball at the Raider 48-yard line. Third and three. In motion is Ricky Young. Tarkin and rolling right. And then throws into a crowd. And Craig, the tight end, makes the reception at the 41-yard line. What, what Tarkin and likes on this situation, third and one, third and two, is to flood the, flood the defense. See, he's looking pass, buying time, and hits the open man. When you say flood, you mean send so many men yeah. to a particular area of the field. Send three men to one area, Jim. All right. Yeah. First and 10 on the Raider, 41. Rashad left, Sammy White right. Tucker the tight end on the right side. Ricky Young on a wing now, so Robert Miller all alone in the backfield. And Tarkinen going for a touchdown to Miller. And it is broken up. Sammy White was going deep down the right side. And a good play by Lester Hayes. Two years out of Texas A&M. Mick Tinglehoff, the veteran setter, you can watch him now working on Big Mike McCoy, and Tinglehoff now gets help from Robert Miller, and McCoy storms through both of them, but by that time, Tarkin had unloaded. Well, on this particular pass, the ball was just a little short. Just a little short, he might have had it. There you're looking at that split screen. The field general is John Madden on your left, and way above looking down a thoroughly frustrated Al Davis who said there was no reason in the world why we didn't make the playoffs, but they didn't. Tarkinen going to Rashad, and Rashad is brought down at the 31-yard line by Monty Jackson. The Vikings, of course, are playing with house money right now anyway because the Rams are beating Green Bay and suddenly it is not a must win situation at all for the Vikings and it's just as well because they're down 24 to 6 with 14 34 left in the game but they're driving Vinny. Yeah. first and 10 on the Raider 31 Tarkin in starting to scramble and then throws to oh, oh. Ahmad Rashad at the 20, 15, 10 yard line. Rashad coming back to take it away from a crowd. Heck of a play by Tarkington and Rashad. Tarkington was rushed. He stepped up in the cup, 
<laughs> spotted Rashad. Rashad came back for the ball and then turned upfield. And right now, Coach, the Vikings are not worried about what's happening in L.A. They have something to prove on this field. This has been a great, great job by talking on this drive so far. Uh, first down at the 10, Robert Miller is hit. And down he goes, Rod Martin again, making the hit, number 53. We were talking moments ago about that game down south and the Rams leading Green Bay handily 21 to 7 in the fourth. So from the looks of things, Philadelphia will win a wild card. Green Bay will fall out of the playoffs. Minnesota, even though they lose, will win the division. There's Foreman in and out. Second and goal from the nine. Talking in to Ricky Young, and Young oh. is to the five-yard line. Oh. Cutting and goes oh. in. Oh, Ricky. Touchdown, Ricky Young. Oh. Well, action. Well, Ricky well, Young, that well, is the fifth good. touchdown he has scored passing this year. He has one running. This is the same play that Tarkenton used early in the first quarter, going the opposite the way, getting the flood going, that we're turning back, hitting Ricky Young, makes a good inside move, follows his interference, and makes the move as if he's going to the outside, stops on the wet ground, and pulls it on in because the defense cannot stop on the wet field. Dan Meyer missed his other point after, but not this time. So he's 35 out of 36 for the year, and it's Oakland 24. Minnesota, 13. Okay. It is 24 to 13 in favor of the Raiders. The Vikings just scoring on a nine yard pass from Fran talking into Ricky Young. Arthur Whittington along with Joe Stewart deep and Rick Danmeyer kicking off for Minnesota. We have 13 minutes and two seconds left to go in the game. Dan Meyer kicking it over to the right side. Stewart will watch it go out of bounds, so they'll have to re-kick from the 30-yard line. Joe Stewart, a rookie out of Missouri and a fourth-round draft choice for the Raiders, took Dan Meyer's short kick on the 15-yard line, and what a return by young Joe Stewart. And then he is an example where a penalty forced you to kick five yards back and then getting a short kick what that can do it was a 56 yard return by Joe Stewart the kid out of Missouri breaking tackles down the near sideline and so the Raiders take over first and ten on the Viking 30 yard line David Hum giving to Arthur Whittington and Whittington dives to the 26 yard line so Minnesota no sooner do they score then here come the Raiders after him again on that return by Stewart. There were 9,956 no-shows in Oakland today because of the rain. So over 44,000 in the park. From the 26-yard line, the Raiders have David Hum at the control. Second man is Arthur Whittington. Flag on the play. Randy Holloway made the tackle at the 25. And there is an instance of what John Madden was talking about before the game. Holding on running plays. And 76% of the time this year, that penalty has been called holding on a running play. Uh, we never used to think in terms of holding on a running play. You, if, if that were called, you'd say, how could he be holding on a running, running play? play. See? <laughs> All the rules that have been made to help 55. the offense. Has added more penalties, Jim, and slowed the game slowed down. Slowed the ball game right. down. So the ball spotted on a Viking 36-yard line after the big return by Stewart. Second down and 16. And Hum, with a lot of time, finally sees Whittington at the 30, and he slips and then drives forward to 27. Boy, David Hum, with all kinds of time oh, standing back there, just waiting for somebody to get loose. That's what the passer loves, that type of protection. Of course, Oakland's always had great protection. It's an example of that is that uh, 
Stabler has had no yards rushing this year. If they didn't have that kind of an offensive line, he would have to run sometimes. And there he is. Kenny Stabler looking on. The Raiders have a third and seven on the Viking 28-yard line, and the Raiders lead 24 to 13 with 11.25 left in the game. I'm looking at Vanisak and then throws it too low. Pete Vanisak was open. And Bobby Bryant came up to hit him. Banaszak played in 120 straight games. He scored two touchdowns in Super Bowl XI against Minnesota. And I guess in 1975, that was his finest year when he tied O.J. Simpson with 16 touchdowns. And as we mentioned earlier, it has been rumored that Banaszak will call it a career after this game today. Bud Grant. I would guess somebody has told Bud Grant that the Packers are losing, wouldn't you, George? Uh, he knows that, yeah, I'm sure. There's usually someone on the sideline that keeps you up to date. Hum will hold on the 35. 45-yard field goal attempt by Arrow. Man is good! Well, that makes him feel good because he missed a, a chip shot last week against Miami, and we got a lot of criticism. Well, we'll return to Oakland after this word from your local station. Guy following a 45 yard field goal by Arrow Mann that sees the Raiders lead 27 to 13. Guy kicking off to the Vikings. Deep in the middle and chasing it is Kevin Miller. Bobbles it, picked up by Robert Miller at the 10 to the 15. And Robert Miller disappears in a pile at the 20 yard line. First and 10 for talking in on his 20. A little lob to Bob Tucker, the tight end. He's to the 20 and goes out of bounds just shy at the 25-yard line. Yeah. So he'll pick up five. It'll be second and five. Charlie Phillips ran him out of bounds. Well, I'll tell you, Coach, I think that had a little more potential than Tucker yeah. got out of it. Yeah, see, if he turned up field, he'd have had more yards. Yes, he sir. probably had uh, a first down. But he's not a running back, so, you know, he's supposed to catch it first. Second and five for the Vikings on their own 25-yard line. Rashad is left, white right. Foreman staying in the block. Now they set up a screen for Foreman. He's to the 30 and going out of bounds at the 33-yard line before Willie Brown can pop him. Number 24, Willie Brown, 16-year veteran of 204 pro games. That's something you don't see very much. Two consecutive screens. And it's, it's good generalship on targeted part. One to the right, one to the left. Two consecutive screens. He's picked up a first down. And you're talking about Willie Brown. But he's been a great one over the years. You know, he made his first American Football League interception 15 years ago this week. First and 10. And Tarkinen going over the middle to Ricky Young. And he got away from Martin. And he gets across the 40 where Monty Johnson brings it down at the 41. That's the first time today that Rod Martin was slickered and it was Ricky Young who did it. Ricky Young has actually been playing good today. He's really uh, playing heads up football because if you're watching, he's making some good moves. He wants to break one because he knows that they have to get points. So watch this. He goes back. Now he's going to try to sprint out, but he sees that there's not too much out there. So he tries to turn it up the field. It'll be second and two for the Vikings on their own 41-yard line. Straight ahead, Robert Miller, and he sees daylight, and he's tripped up at the Raider 46-yard line. He was following Sammy White, and Charlie Phillips finally upends him. Talking about Sammy White and Charlie Phillips, watch this hole. Beautiful. You don't have to have a lot of ability to go <laughs> through a hole like that. Charlie Phillips fighting Sammy White's wow. block, able to bring him down at the 46. Matusik charged too deep and took himself off. He didn't have to trap him on the play. First and 10 Vikings on the Raider 46. 
Tarkanen over the middle. Oh, juggled oh, and great. caught by Ricky Young at the 35-yard line. He's down at the 34. Great That'll pitch. be enough for a first down and a great reception by Ricky Young. Uh, well, you can see why he's the leading receiver in the league. Tarkanen goes to him, has a lot of confidence in him. You know, if Tucker, Vinny catches six passes today, the Vikings will have five players with 50 or more. No team in history has ever done that. Tucker has com completed two, and for Tarkenton, he has completed 11 in a row now, so he's really on a roll. Francis looking, still looking. Finally going deep. What a kick! Come on, Ahmad Rashad fighting Willie Brown, and he couldn't oh. hold on to it. Tarkenton had a week to throw in this one, Jim. Look yes, at that. he did, Coach. A lot of time. All over the place. And he hit the right guy. Rashad was open. Played the ball real nice. Lost it coming down. And, and Willie Brown went for the ball. S smart football on Willie Brown. Watch part. what happens to Otis Sistron. First, Mick Tinglehoff meets him head on. And he gets around Tinglehoff by pushing him away, slipping and going inside. Then he is promptly <laughs> double teamed as Frank Meyer gave him a lick. And finally, Otis just turns to see the pass incomplete. Robert Miller across the 25-yard line goes down at the 23 at the feet of Jack Tatum. Well, as an old broken-down X running back, I love the line play of the Vikings right now. They're really blasting out. They're opening up good holes. And Tarkington's mixing his calls real well. This is the this drive has had the only real semblance of a running game we've seen today. Yes, the pass is now setting up the run. So now the, the uh, Raiders have to respect the run a little bit. And as they measure for the first down, and you see that they are going to make it, we have eight minutes and 30 seconds left in the game, 27 to 13 in favor of the Raiders. Robert Miller hurt his left leg on that last play. It could be an ankle, so timeout. You look at Fran Tarkinen's numbers, 23 for 30, 227 yards, four interceptions. He paid the price of that early 21 to nothing Oakland lead, and he has reached for two touchdowns. Robert Miller hurting his ankle, I believe, as he tried to cut. He twisted it on the wet going. That's their second serious injury today, Vinny. Yes, with Robert Miller going out and Nate Wright suffered a broken right arm early in the game. While we got the chance, uh, we got a report that Daryl Stingley's coming along improving. That's good news, oh, that's Jim. Great, Coach. I know how you it's, feel about it. Yeah, he's he's a tremendous person, has a wonderful family, and we want to send him our best wishes. First and ten on the Raider 24. White goes right, Rashad left, Tucker going to the right side. Ricky Young and Chuck Foreman, play action fake to Foreman. Tarkenden down to Rashad. To the oh, five, touchdown, Ahmad Rashad. Rashad. I'll tell you, Vinny, Tarkenden's been hot these last two drives. He had 11 straight, then had one broken up, and he comes right back with a winner. Play action looking strong, comes back against the grain. Rashad puts a nice move and scores. What he did, Coach, was he established the pass, forgetting about the run, and then after he established the pass, he used the run sparingly to help him use the pass. They got to get this extra point. They're back in the ball game. Rick Danmeyer, who missed his first point, the only miss he's had all year, kicks it up. It is good. And so, with eight minutes and four seconds left in the game, the Oakland Raiders 27, the Minnesota Vikings 20, and make a noise. <laughs> Rick Danmeyer signaling he's ready. It is 27 to 20 in favor of Oakland, and they're loading up the left side on the onside kick. It is fielded by Pete Banasak, and Banasak falls on it on his own with eight minutes. With on the 46-yard line, the Vikings tied an onside kick with eight uh, minutes. That's a big gamble. And uh, with Vanisak up close, they had a man who can handle the football. There it is, and Pete just fell on it. They were ready for it. Now they've got great field position. Well, from the 47-yard line of the Vikings, it's first and ten Raiders. 
Bradshaw and Branch in a slot left. Whittington and Van Egan behind David Hahn. Van Egan inside the 40. You know, that's what the, the uh, Raiders have done in the past. You, you gang up, you anticipate that strong running game to their left. They come back against the grain and you pick up big yardage. Well, it's set up very well for that coach. He picked up nine, so it is second and one. The people who came dressed for the rain, the storm has come and gone. 44,000 here with over almost 10,000 no-shows. Van Egan again, driving to the 35. And because of his own effort, he picks up the first down. Mark Van Egan, a remarkable ball player, five years out of Colgate. Third round draft choice in 74. Over 4,000 yards in his career. Led the AFC in rushing. He had an Oakland record last year with 1,273 yards. He's had over 1,000 three times, including this year. Look at those numbers, 24 for 87. He just refuses to go down, not until he gets his first down. First and 10 on the 34, Van Egan again. Now, fellas, after that effort by Van Egan, why in the world would they give him the ball right away? He didn't have a chance to catch his breath. Uh, he's, he's a, we, we were talking about that, Then he's a durable back. He, that's he, a, he's an underrated back. That's a good, I want to really get this point. And you see, sometimes, that, your point is very good, Vinny, but as a player, a lot of times you run better when you're tired. Now, I don't know why, but you forget about all outside interests. Maybe he wants you, 100 yards, And too. you want to give yes. the, the ball to your most reliable back. Second and nine from the 33. Whittington on a wing, and they give it to Whittington following up Shaw. And he goes out of bounds at the 25-yard line with Blair and McNeil with him. Upshaw pulling, and John Turner came up to accept the block from Upshaw to kind of strip the carrier of the block. Watch Turner number 27. Look at that. He has to take Upshaw right there. So he brought down that blocker, and then Hannon, Blair, McNeil ride him out of bounds. That was a might as well. <laughs> oh, and Turner walks away shaking his head. John Turner, by the way, a rookie out of Miami and a second round draft choice for the Vikings this year. Third and one from the 24. Van Egan, and he has himself a first down. Well, they tell you where they're going, and that's that's where they're going. They don't change. You know something, Vinny, that's very interesting. The Raiders are responding right now, but I am suspicious of the fact that State was not playing in the second half. I don't think that he's really seriously hurt. I think that they want to arrest him because he did his job in the first half. Could very well be David Hum getting some playing time, and the crowd reacts because a longtime favorite here is back in the game. Fred Bolitnikov, 14 years out of Florida State, and this could be his last game yeah. in a Raider uniform as Kenny Stabler looks on. Bolitnikov goes wide right, Bradshaw left. Casper is on the right side. They flip out to Whittington trying to set up a screen for the little back. Oh, but he boy, hit. does he pay a price. Fred McNeil, number 54, over to drill him. And Holloway. Oh, Randy Hol Holloway. Holloway took the correct angle and really put the wood to him. Watch Holloway come over here, 70, 75. Great hit. Right there. And McNeil hit him right back into Holloway, which is a <laughs> double concussion. Well, there's one thing. The Vikings came out in the second half at least ready to play physical football. Yeah, they played good, good ball in the second half. Second and nine on the Viking 22. Bradshaw on a slot right inside Belichnikov. Bradshaw to Van Egan who slips and then drives and picks up a couple as he dropped at the 20-yard line. It'll be third and seven. There's Fred Belichnikov, 35 years old, 14 years. Belichnikov scored a touchdown today on a 13-yard pass from Stabler. He has caught two touchdown passes this year, and the crowd would give anything to see him score another. Third and seven from the 20. David Hum is going to be swallowed up by Matt Blair and Jeff Seaman. And for Matt Blair, 
He finally broke through to get his man. And for Blair, that would be his fourth sack. Mark Mullaney leads the Vikings in sacks with eight. Well, I made that point about Stabler, so that leads me to this point, Vinny and Coach. Uh, the Vikings are showing character now because they could have been blown out of this football game. Yes, they are. That that was a good call defensively. They dogged them and they got a sack and took them out of field goal range. Well, Ray Guy is in there to punt. Kevin Miller is deep to receive, but the Raiders, no doubt, would like to have Guy sharpshoot one out inside the five. Guy standing on his 45. This great punter. The first punt he ever kicked for Oakland. And remember, he's the only first round draft choice punter. The first punt he ever kicked, he shanked it. And then well, oh. everybody said, wait a minute, what have they done? So the next one he punted went yeah. 65 yards, and they said, okay, welcome he, to the club. He hasn't shanked many. No, yeah. indeed. That actually, that extra five the yards. Game, offense number eight. The extra Fourth five, down. five yards does two things. It uses up some time on the clock, and it gives him a better kicking angle. For Bud Grant and the Vikings, three minutes and 23 seconds left in the game. 27 to 20 Raiders. Guy standing at the 50. Van Egan is back there to block for him. McNeil will be coming in hard from the left side. So comes Holloway, but there's a whistle on the play. Randy Holloway trying to get in there at the punter. The Vikings is. And it's against Oakland, so someone drew Holloway offside. Holloway, by the way, has blocked a field goal yeah. and a point after this year. So we'll keep an eye Ball on that start, 75. Center, number yeah. 66, fourth down. Vikings can't get through, and Guy tries to hang it, and all Kevin Miller can do is watch it go into the end zone. So it's a touchback, and they'll bring it out to the Viking 20-yard line. Minnesota trailing by seven. Three minutes and 15 seconds left in the game. Three fifteen left in the game. The Vikings are down 27 to 20. Minnesota in possession, first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. They were down 21 to nothing at the end of the first quarter, and they're making a game of it now. Sammy White wide right, Tucker in a slot, Foreman on a wing, and Rashad is left. Tarkin is cranking up and going deep to Foreman, broken up and almost intercepted by Charlie Phillips. Phillips, four years out of USC, got his hand on the pass, but couldn't one-hand it. Actually, uh, Foreman yeah. was open on that. Yeah, coach. Foreman oh. was open. They uh, actually, Foreman didn't expect the ball, and uh, then Tarkin saw him open and did, didn't adjust to it. it was Second and ten position. on the Viking twenty. McCoy chasing him, but Tarkin in close. Oh, he what a catch good. by Robert Miller. Yes. Miller, who did not get out of bounds, remember he left with the bad leg, and he great. comes back to great. make a circus great. catch. And a great play by Fran Tarkin. But the clock is running down. He was unable to get out of bounds as he was dropped at the Viking 49. The quick feet of Tarkin to the great hands of Miller. First and 10 on the Viking 49. Rashad is left, White is right. Tucker is on the right side. Robert Miller. You know, Tarkin is also one of the best two-minute quarterbacks in the business, so he has a lot of time. Yeah, they each have three timeouts, too. And he has good field position now. On the Raider 47-yard line. Second down with two minutes and two seconds to the end of the game. Tarkin chased by Tume, but Tume missed him. Now he fires all the way down the left side. It is intercepted by Hayes. And Hayes is to the 25. 
30, 35, and upended at the 35-yard line. For Bud Grant, he sees Francis Tarkington throw his fifth interception, and with 1.43 left, it's 27-20, Oakland. You're looking at the Rams score with Green Bay, 21 to 14. The Rams have the ball. There's a minute and 28 seconds left in that game. So it looks like Green Bay will lose and fall out of the playoff picture, and Philadelphia will play Atlanta, in Atlanta, in the wild card game. First and 10, as Van Egan is stacked up at the 35-yard line. Seven turnovers, yeah. five interceptions for Francis Parkington. You can't win with five, Vinny. Very seldom can you win with five. The Raiders leaving 27-20, and as you can see, Oakland with three timeouts, and the Vikings two. Second and 10 from the 35, and Banasak is across the 35, and Blair drags him down at the 38-yard line. Well, uh, Minnesota's strategy is everybody up, play every player's a run, Use your timeouts. The Raiders 27 and the Minnesota Vikings 20. 130 left in the game. A report from Los Angeles. Frank Corral just kicked a 25-yard field goal. The Rams lead 24 to 14. One minute and three seconds left in that game. Third and a seven. David Hum on a sneak. Going to be dragged down from behind and falls forward. Did not make it. There's a minute and 23 left, and the Vikings have one timeout left. Now they got to go for the block kick. That was a good call by uh, the Raiders. Everybody's bunched up. By the way, we talked about Tarkin and throwing five interceptions today. He's 25 for 34 for 280 yards and three touchdowns, but the five interceptions have just torn him apart, plus two fumble recoveries, so the Vikings have suffered seven turnovers today, and that's just too many, especially against a team of the caliber of the Oakland Raiders. A reminder, with Green Bay about ready to lose in Los Angeles, that would mean the Philadelphia Eagles have won a wild card berth. Philadelphia would then play in Atlanta on the 24th, the pregame show would hit the air at noon Eastern time, and the game would get underway at 12.30 Eastern time. Philadelphia at Atlanta, barring a miracle for Green Bay in the Coliseum with only a minute left. Ray Guy with no safety man. All the bikes are coming, and he'll kick it to the open field. And it hits on the 15, and at the 10, and it gets inside the 10. The Vikings scrambling for it. Down at the bottom is Wally Hilgenberg. And they will spot it at the Viking 13-yard line. So with a minute and 13 seconds left in the game, Tarkinen has to move it from his 13-yard line. The Vikings gambled, and particularly today, if you remember, with eight minutes left in the game, the Vikings had scored and tried the onside kick, and that backfired. But if I was a coach, I would always have one man back. I got that information from my silent partner here. <laughs> Tarkinen looking for a receiver. He's got Ricky Young at the 20. Young to the 25, and down he goes at the 26-yard line, and the clock keeps running. Remember, Minnesota does not have any more timeouts left, so a quick huddle from the 26-yard line. First down. Tarkington still looking left. Tume is charging him. McCoy is chasing him. He's in the end zone, but he got away from Tume. He throws on the run and off Rashad's hand. Out of bounds. Stops the clock with 42 seconds. Boy, Tarkington can still move. He can still score. Oh, yes. Tume almost got him for a safety. He Our producer, Robert Stenner. Huh? Our Man. director, Tony Verner. <laughs> Salute those men who brought the telecast to you. Wally Miller, our associate producer. Managing field editor, Brooks Graham. 
Technical director Jay Fairman. Audio Mark Radulovich. To Dr. Robert Woods, who kept stats for us today. 27 20 in favor of Oakland. Cartman has 42 seconds left from his own 26. Francis throwing over the head of Sammy White and dropping untouched. White would have had to be about 10 feet tall to get to that one. So 36 seconds left with Oakland leading Minnesota 27 20. Green Bay had one minute left and they were losing. For those folks who had been watching the Ram Green Bay game and you saw the final 31 14 Los Angeles Green Bay falls out of the picture the Eagles will play in Atlanta the pregame show on the 24th at noon Eastern time the game at 1230 and the Vikings even though they are losing John Matusik and Ron Yeri have a little shoving match the Vikings even though they will lose to Oakland will have won the division. Yeah. You know, here Rand talking is saying, hey, Matusi was picking on my man, but the penalty will be against Minnesota. Jim, you want one defensive back. Ball start, number 73 offense. Extra deep. You don't want to give him a touchdown. Say you don't want to give him anything cheap. So you have one guy stationed 30, 40 yards downfield so he can play the ball on either side. Well, that's exactly what Oakland is doing right now. And that fella is Jack Tatum, who is way back on his own 45. Tarkinen scrambling to the very end, and Kume has him, and down he goes. Kume finally got him, and he's been after him all day. Tume almost sacked him in the end zone, and finally, Pat, nine years out of Vanderbilt, got his meat hooks on him and dropped him inside wow. the five. He stayed he outside as Tarkington went to his right. Tume kept the correct angle, so Tarkington couldn't come back. So well, now time and downs are running out. It's fourth down as Tarkington looking desperately and throws it to Tucker. To the 15, to the 20, down by Davis at the 27-yard line. That's not enough for a first down. As soon as this game is over, we will join 60 Minutes, which is in progress. And remember, 60 Minutes will be seen on the West Coast at its regular time. We have four seconds left to go. And in the East, 60 Minutes has just come on the air. They got the downs mixed up, Benny. It's fourth. See? They didn't pick up the first down. They got the downs mixed up. See? The Vikings should be off the field. It should be Oakland's ball because it was fourth down when Tarkinen passed to Tucker and he did not get the first down. So Minnesota will win and they will finish up with the football. With four seconds left to go, Oakland 27, Minnesota 20. Green Bay lost, Philadelphia won. Philadelphia plays in Atlanta, the wild card game on the 24th. Free game show at noon, game at 12.30. And Minnesota wins the Central Division. And David Hum will be well protected. Down he goes. And that will be it. The Raiders aren't going to the playoffs, but they finish their year on a high note as they defeat Minnesota. Now, final score, Oakland 27, Minnesota 20. For George Allen and Jim Brown, this is Ben Scully wishing you a very Merry Christmas, reminding you of the playoff game, Philadelphia and Atlanta, 12 o'clock pregame, 12.30 game time next Sunday, Eastern time. And with all of that, wishing you all a very pleasant goodbye from Oakland.